Mitchell. The right choice to reach your potential. The money store, we've got money for you. The title loans is where the key. It's quick and easy and the first month's free at the money store. My wife and kids speaks the language of comedy. <laughs> My wife and kids. Weekdays at four on UTV 44. Weather service says there is a 70% chance of thunderstorms today in Gainesville starting around 1 p.m. There is a 100% chance of humidity. <laughs> Rob Stone, Matt Stinchcomb, back here with you. And, and, and Matt, what do you expect to see from Urban Meyer leading in to Tennessee next week? Well, we're going to see more, that's for sure. This is Tennessee prequel in this ball game. More offense and more looks on defense to give Tennessee something more to prepare for. All right, we'll see you at halftime. We hand the keys over now to Kara, Andre, and Dave. Thank you very much, Rob and Matt. Great job. We are just moments away from SEC football. The Gators getting set to storm the swamp, a place they have gone 107 and 13 since 1990. It is the 125th consecutive sellout here at Florida Field. The Gators mean business today, despite the fact that this is a non-conference showdown with the Troy Trojans. to the Wrangler SEC Game of the Week right here on the SEC Network. And today we will showcase the top-ranked team of the country, the Florida Gators, seeking their 11th consecutive victory. A win today would tie the school record for consecutive wins. The opponent today, the Troy Trojans. Hello, everybody. Dave Neal alongside Heisman Trophy winner Andre Ware back in 1989. And, well, we get to see the 2007 Heisman Trophy winner on display today. But, you know, there's so much talk about this Florida football team. What do they have to do to get back to a national championship? Well, I guess it all starts today in the eyes of Urban Meyer. This team has been focused and prepared, and they are ready for business. Well, they really are. And today we're going to see a couple of things from the Florida Gators and a more aggressive offense. Last week they only showed basically three different offensive looks. They want to want to master the bonsai look where they're attacking you on offense. Defensively, they were very vanilla in last week's game. Talked to Charlie Strong yesterday. They want to be very aggressive. They're going to show a lot of different looks and come after Troy defensively. And in special teams, are headed up by the head coach Urban Meyer. They're going to come after Troy and maybe try to block a punt early in this football game. Well, I think a lot of people around the league realize what's in store next week, and that is the SEC opener against Tennessee. So Urban Meyer wants to make sure that his team is focused. And he knows Troy is a good football team. So he, he believe, believe me, folks, he knows that his players will be ready to go today. Let's go down the sidelines, check in with the third member of our team, Kara Capuana. Kara? Dave, thanks so much. Coach Meyer telling us yesterday that one of the biggest benefits of the blowout victory over Charleston Southern was working out the communication between the coaches specifically with his new offensive coordinator Steve Adazio. Adazio was thrilled with how smoothly the communication went over headsets and as I looked back over my notes about these two what really impressed me was the synergy about their message of how the spread offense is run at Florida. Adazio says it's five men coming off the line trying to maul you. Coach Meyer says it's 300 pound men running off the ball trying to split your face open. So there is definitely an intensity and a toughness at Florida, and that's a message that these Gators are trying to get across. And it doesn't, uh, Andre, it doesn't hurt Florida that maybe their toughest guy is their quarterback. Yeah, no doubt about it. Tim <laughs> Tebow leading the way and not going to shy away from any contact. Boy, this should be a good football team, a wide-open Troy offense against a more aggressive Florida defense, two trains meeting in the night. Urban Meyer said his defense was painfully vanilla last week. Well, it's it's time to play today, and that's been the message throughout the week. Be tough, be physical, and be focused. And uh, I think that team, from what we saw at practice, were all three of those elements. Florida, they won the toss. They defer. 
So Troy will receive. Urban Meyer in charge of the special teams here at Florida. You can bet that this Florida team will be solid in that department. Caleb Sturgis will kick it away. Maurice Greer and Jarrell Jernigan back to return for the Trojans. It will be Jernigan inside the five. Drop at the 13-yard line. Dustin Doe on the special teams tackle. Dustin did not play in the opener. He was suspended by the coach, but is back today. So here comes Troy in this offense that led the Sun Belt in scoring a year ago. Levi Brown, the 6'4", 220-pound senior out of Mount Juliet, Tennessee, will run the show. Had a great first half in the opening game last week. A loss to Bowling Green, but he was 18 out of 20 in the opening half. Andre, what should we expect from this offense today? Well, they're going to be very wide open, but look for them to try to establish the run against Florida early. Brown will throw it and will throw it into his bench area. Today's starting offensive lineups for Troy will be rolling above our score on your screen. But there's Levi Brown, who got the starting job about midway through the season a year ago when Jamie Hampton, their starter to begin the 08 campaign, got hurt for the rest of the season and Brown early came in and was a great surprise for the coaches and he has maintained his role as the starting quarterback here in 2009. A no huddle set for Troy. They will look to the sidelines and movement across the board. Referee today is Mr. Tom Ritter, longtime SEC referee. What does it surprise you that Troy comes out throwing the football? And you talk, we talked to their coaches earlier in the week. They discussed just running the football. Felt like they got away from it a bit too soon last week. Dead ball, offside, defense. The defender was in the neutral zone, causing a false start. Five yard penalty, second out. Nice early break for Troy. Larry Blakeney now in his 19th year as the head coach of the Troy Trojans. And it was interesting. He says, you know, we've got to get our running backs north and south. Our yeah. offensive line's got to blow people off the ball. And we got to worry about us first. Had a little bit of heart to heart with uh, Dewan Harris, their junior running back. Not much happening out over the 20 for the quarterback Brown. Excuse me, Don, Dontavious Parker came in around that Wildcat formation. That'll be about third down and about a yard. They wanted to redshirt him last year, but he was pressed into action because of injuries. But uh, there's a different way of getting themselves to the running game. Brown back in the game at quarterback. Bunch set on the near side. is incomplete looking for Jarrell Jernigan their best receiver and the Gator defense holds despite the defense of all sides well they had three receivers pretty much in the same vicinity and they like to go to Jarrell Jernigan they he, he basically set a score record last year with 77 receptions but unable to convert on third and short and if Troy's going to be in this ball game they have got to master Third down and short. And they've got to stop number 25 in the blue jersey, Brandon James, back to return. He will let it bounce inside the 35, down to the 31. A little squibber was a good way to keep the ball out of the hands of Brandon James. So the Florida offense set to take the field with Tim Tebow. Tim only played a half in the opening game against Charleston Southern. 10 out of 15 with one touchdown in that game, but over his career, few have been better. Couldn't have met a nicer young man on Thursday, and I'll tell you what, he is, uh, he is as well as advertised. You saw his career touchdown numbers are uh, just disgusting. Little option. It's off to Dempsey, to the right side. He will take it to the 35-yard line, knocked out of bounds by Brian Willis. 
And the Florida offensive starting lineup will come your way at the top of your screen on a second down and five. Well, right, don't blink when you watch Jeff Demps with a football because you'll miss him. He's one of the fastest players in the country, and just give him a crease. And you're looking at the back of that jersey and the name on the on the back of it. It stays with a tailback. Fullback TJ Pridemore also in the game. Offset to the left of Tebow. Here goes Dents to the 40. To midfield. Pushed out of bounds. Inside the 40-yard line at the 39. Portland Fuller, the safety, bumped him out of bounds. Just going to get the edge right there. You, you'll see Jeff Demps right here. If you're Troy, you cannot give out, give up outside leverage. You've got to keep plays inside where you've got help coming from inside out. A bobbled handoff between Tebow and Demps. Demps able to fall on it, but a loss of about five on the play for Florida. Well, you don't really see that. The ball handling from Tim Tebow and Jeff Demps right here. Just a bad snap trying to get it back down. Actually hits Jeff Demps in the top of the shoulder pad. But they are excellent at ball handling. They want to go fast. And part of the reason, Dave, is because they've got so much confidence in Tim Tebow with his intensity. There's Tebow. Options it. Deontay Thompson trying to get the corner. Can't do it. Great play out on the corner by Cortland Fuller. The safety read it well. Well, that's what you got to do. Tackles in the open field. Cortland Fuller coming up from that safety position. You're one on one with speed. Don't blink. But make sure you make a nice tackle in the open field because there may not be a lot of help. There's a lot of responsibilities inside when you play a team like Florida. Tebow to account for. But you got to make those tackles out in space. Third down and long. Tebow steps up, fires over the middle. Right off the shoulder pads of Thompson, and that's not good news for Deontay. He dropped on the second play of the game in the opener last week, dropped a sure touchdown in the wide open field. And right. Didn't make his coach very happy. You, know, you see the zone coverage, and he just kind of sits down inside the zone, thrown on the back shoulder. And that's one that uh, should have easily been caught, but he's still searching for that first reception of the season. Well, the Gators are stopped on their opening possession. Cornelius Williams back to return the punt for Chaz Henry. Good hang time. Florida down to cover it. Picture perfect inside the 10, down at the seven yard line. Or check it up like you're pitching, which I wish. It's a hot, humid day in Gainesville. We're scoring. And welcome to the Wrangler SEC Game of the Week. First quarter action at Florida Field. Dave Neal, Andre Ware, Kara Capuano. Number one ranked Florida and the Troy Trojans out of the Sun Belt Conference. Troy just one and nine all time versus SEC teams. Florida, a club that has won every game since they lost in this building to Ole Miss well, last look for, season. Look for Charlie Strong here, Dave, to come after Levi Brown. Inside handoff, not much happening out over the five to about the seven. DeWan Harris will get the carry. DeWan going north and south on that carry. Look at our impact players yeah, for Le Troy, and there's Harris right in the middle. Yeah, Levi Brown going to start it for us. So it was 18 to 20, as you mentioned, in the first half last week. They need that type of production. DeWan Harris last, last year rushed for over 1,100 yards and then leading the way defensively, Boris Lee. Slant over the middle. Josh Jarbo, the freshman out of Decatur, Georgia, with the grab. That'll be his third catch of the season. Jarbo, an interesting story, originally committed to Oklahoma, but due to some off the field issues, never actually even suited up. Was released from his scholarship by Bob Stoops two days before camp started. Well, he found his way to Troy. Got a lot of talent. You mentioned it the size, 6'2, right at 200 pounds. He could have a phenomenal season for Troy. Dontavious Parker in at quarterback. The left-hander will keep it. Not over the 15 to the 16. He needed to cross the 17-yard line. A.J. Jones, the first man there, the junior out of Tampa, Florida. A.J. Jones is going to be the, the leader of this uh, Florida defense next year when Brandon Spikes is gone and Ryan Stamper 
the other two linebackers, but it is a talented group. We'll bring in the change. This will be. Boy, you had third and short two times if you're Troy. You have got to convert if you're going to be in this ball game because you know offensively, Florida's going to get hot at some point. Just short. And you know, you can't take that chance this early in the game. You cannot gamble. If you're the head coach, Larry Blakeney, Blakeney, you've got to punt the football and play defense. So Larry Blakeney will send out his punt team. That's where, Dave, a lot of spread offenses, especially the more pass-oriented offenses, when you have those short yardage situations, you don't work enough on that stuff to blow people off the football. You're more of a finesse-type team. So when you get third down and short, you can't just hunker down and, and wedge people out of there because you haven't spent the work doing it. Well, we'll see what Florida does here on this punt by Troy. Will Goggin stands back at the three-yard line. Florida dancing around at the line of scrimmage. Look for him to come after a punt here early. Gators set up the return as Brandon James will let it bounce and field it at the 35. Dancing around and a flag comes in. James swarmed at the 38 yard line. A 38 yard punt by Goggins. Well, you don't want to let Brandon James just speed. Now, you look at this Florida team, and I got a chance to see him on film of last week's game against Charleston State, and the first thing that stands out speed. Everybody, the entire team, even the big guys up front look like they can run. Let's take a look at the principal financial group edge to the game. One of the keys for Florida control that line of scrimmage. Return. Illegal block in the back. Number 82, receiving team. Ten yards from the spot of the foul. First down. They want to unleash those big 300-pound bodies on you up front and control the line of scrimmage and then stop the run. And they've done a pretty good job of that, especially on third down and short of stopping Troy and forcing them to punt the football. For the second offensive possession for Tebow and the Gators. Here's Brandon James dancing around and he might have lost a yard on the play. Let's take a look at Troy's principal financial group edge to the game. They want to mix things up defensively and not give Tim Tebow just the same look over and over. Force him to think a little bit as well as the receivers. And then they've got to tackle well, which they've done early in this football game. Get a lot of hats to the football and make tackles in, in the open space. Debo swarmed and swallowed up at the 27-yard line. Cameron Sheffield, the senior out of Portal, Georgia, all Sun Belt first team. Boy, these defensive ends for Troy are very, very talented. Well, he's an explosive player, and you see him get up the field. You mentioned it all, all Sun Belt Conference last year. They're the bookends here. He and Brandon Lang on the other side. A lot of respect in the Sun Belt Conference for those two players. Receiver set on a third down and let's say 11. Ideal for Troy defensively. Four man rush. Tebow hit. Pass is incomplete. Looking for Riley Cooper. Donnell Golden came flying in from his linebacker position and really laid the wood to Tebow. Well, he's just going to come right from the other side here, right from the left side of Tim Tebow, right in his face. And the coaches say about Donnell Golden is that he just gets better and better each and every time he touches the field. So Florida will have to punt it away again. Taz Henry back to punt Cornelius Williams to return. Good push from Troy, but nothing happening there. And Williams with a risky play to field that ball at the 30 yard line, a 44 yard punt. We will come back to Florida right after this. Ball scoreless, 
Troy. This is a club that Larry Blakey says will play anybody, anywhere. You look what they've done against the top 25 in their last eight all L's, but playing good out of the gate so far today. Levi Brown, quick hitter to Josh Jarbo. His second grab, but not much happening. Matter of fact, that may have even lost a yard. There is Larry Blakeney. Yeah, he was joking. He said he's trying to convince the athletic director anytime on, on campus. <laughs> <That's right. laughs> anytime at home. They have won the Sun Belt three consecutive years. They are the favorites to win, but got off to a shaky start in week one, losing to Bowling Green, who was coached by last year's offensive coordinator at Tennessee, Dave Clawson. Took over the head job in Bowling Green and put on a show last week. the tail back under center goes Levi Brown handoff left side loose football who's got it it is Florida football Jermaine Cunningham forced the fumble of Dewan Harris. And Justin Tratto may have been the guy to come up and put his hands on the football when it was on the turf. Well, the coaches talked all week about having Dewan Harris run north and south. And you see just a little bit of hesitation there. And you play against a fast Florida defense. They're going to close from the backside. And it's Jermaine Cunningham tracking him down as you just hesitate just enough and poking that football out. So Tebow in the offense back on the field. By the way, last year in the run to the national title, timeout taken by Troy. Florida was plus 22 in the turnover margin department. That's first in the conference, mm. second in the country. That's going to win you a lot of games. A lot mm -hmm. of games. 30-second timeout. You're taking the football away from the opponent and not turning it over yourself. Now you've got a senior quarterback in Tim Tebow. Wouldn't surprise me if uh, Florida's right back at that with that stat again at the end of this season. Well, SEC fans, don't miss the third annual SEC Big East Invitational to be held at Madison Square Garden in New York City on December 9th and at the St. Pete Times Forum in Tampa, Florida on the 10th. The two-night men's college basketball event begins with a doubleheader in New York City when Georgia takes on St. John's, followed by Kentucky and UConn. Now, the following night's doubleheader down in Tampa will feature DePaul and Mississippi State, followed by Syracuse and Florida. Tickets go on sale oh, in about a week or so. Visit the official website to get all those details at secbigeastinvitational.com for more details. A lot of rain. You see the rain coming down. And anywhere else, they might run for cover. But they're so hungry for football here at Florida, they're going to sit tight and ride it out. Well, Florida's carried the ball on the ground four times. They've already had four rushes for minus yards in this game. Tebow to throw. As is tied in, Aaron Hernandez down at the 10-yard line. First down, Florida. Let's take a look at our Florida impact player. And right away, Tim Tebow showing you the impact he's going to have on this football game. 07 Heisman Trophy winner, 44 career rushing touchdowns. Riley Cooper. Having an excellent start to the season. Five receptions over 105 yards last week. Tebow keeping it. Uses a stiff arm. Good help defense. Justin Bray doing a nice job out on the corner. Rides him out of bounds and allows Fuller to come over and help him. i tell you what, Troy defensively, they're not afraid to, uh, to come up and hit you. 29 straight games with a touchdown pass now for Tim Tebow. So they're not afraid to throw it down here inside the red zone. Six. Over the 29 straight games with a touchdown pass. That's best in the country currently. And a timeout taken by Florida. Timeout. Florida. That was their first charge timeout of this half. Boy, you, you look at Tim Tebow physically, he is just an imposing figure. He, he is very well put together, solid guy, and you can see why he's you know not afraid to tuck it and take on linebackers sometimes defensive linemen and then a defensive back against that guy in the open field has no chance uh, he, he will just flat out run you over
know, Tebow, what, one of the things we talked about was, you know, what is he working on in the game as you look at consecutive games with the TD pass where he leads everybody, active players in that department. That's a nice group to be involved with. But he said he spent a lot of the offseason working on the, uh, the intricacies of the passing game in terms of making sure his shoulders were, were aligned perfectly. His footwork was uh, meticulous. Uh, but once the season started, he has to rely on the fact that all that offseason work is now second nature to him. Right, right. And you saw it, Colt McCoy on that graphic as well. The two remind me a lot of one another. Gym rats, if that makes uh, right. any sense to you. Gym rats in a football sense is that they can't get enough of, uh, of the game of football. Always putting in the extra work to get better. Second down and six. Little option. Short side, inside shovel pass to Hernandez. Red well by the Trojans defensively. But Kevin Dixon from inside, the defensive senior defensive tackle, he was a transfer from Nebraska, just getting up field. And what's surprising me so far in this game is that Troy, Dave, kind of matching the intensity of that big offensive line of Florida. They're getting pushed and getting themselves up the field and making plays when they get there. Dixon sat out last year after that transfer. Third down and five. Oh, watch the quarterback draw here. Debo looking, looking for the end zone. Touchdown, and he went to Deontay Thompson, who dropped the ball earlier in the game. And uh, maybe Troy thought that they may go quarterback draw as well and forgot to cover outside. See a lot of bodies stacked inside, accounting for Tim Tebow. Now you got one-on-one -on -one coverage outside, and Donnell Golden forgets to get himself out wide and underneath the route. Jonathan Phillips to attempt the point after. It is up and it is good. But boy, did Deontay Thompson need that? He yes. dropped a 60 potential 65-yard touchdown last week. Dropped his first pass of the game today. But then steps up, Tebow went right back to him, and Thompson hauled it in. The Gator band making some noise now as Florida strikes first. 6.39 to go in the opening quarter. There is Deontay Thompson, the man who grabbed the touchdown pass, the sophomore out of Belle Glade, Florida. When I think of value, Urban Meyer said, I mean, he said it all week. He said at Florida, regarding the drop last week, he says at Florida, you've got to make that play. We've got guys on our roster that will make that play, so if you don't, somebody else will. You talk about putting some pressure on a young man. And Urban said, you know, I like the guy. Yeah, but you know what? There are a lot of talented players here at Florida. If you can't get it done, Next man up. Jernigan inside the five. Makes one guy miss, makes another man miss. Finally dropped at the 24-yard line. Ahmad Black on special teams will record the tackle. Four plays, 29 yards, a minute 23. And it was the fumble by Dewan Harris that set up that Gator touchdown. And that's the thing about Florida is that they, they, they are not afraid to play starters on special teams. That young man right now kind of breathing a sigh of relief after the touchdown reception. But Urban Meyer coaches up the special team units and the only guy that doesn't, the only starter on the defensive side of the ball that does not see action on special teams, Brandon Spice, the big middle linebacker. I see he just doesn't move as fluidly as others at 260 pounds. Otherwise, Brandon might be chugging it down the field on a kickoff coverage team. Inside handoff goes to Sean Southward, the true freshman out of Florence, Alabama. Coaches really love his ability. Yeah, had a couple of carries last week for 11 yards, averaged five and a half yards a carry last week in the game against Bowling Green. But they've already made the change going to the youngster. Levi Brown will check to the sidelines. Four man front by Florida. in the air, loose football, and it falls harmlessly to the turf. Looking for Cornelius Williams. Well, you know, there's just a cluster 
of receivers in the same area. I don't know if it's Cornelius Williams or Andrew Davis, but look at the right side of your screen. Once Levi Brown shoots this ball out, one, two receivers right there bunched together. Hey, you and I could go out and cover one of those guys. You're asking a lot of me. <laughs> You haven't seen my lateral movement. You can yet. backpedal a little bit, can't you? <laughs> Third down and six. Boy, a bunch set by the D line on the right side. Here comes some pressure, and down goes Brown. When Florida gets going, they really get going as A.J. Jones picks up the sack. Yeah, the outside linebacker, he comes underneath and he beats Kyle Wilborn, the right tackle, the freshman right tackle of Troy on his way to Levi, Levi Brown. And he lands on him as well as his own offensive lineman. I mean, you, don't, you don't mind being sacked by one guy, but when you're off, your own offensive lineman's peeling himself off the pile, that's kind of tough to take as a quarterback. James stands back at the 38. A little sidewinder punt from Will Goggins, and James Fair catches it at the gate of 48. Well, we had a chance to talk to Urban Meyer about a speech, a very special speech that Tim Tebow gave during the to the Gators at halftime of last year's national championship game, and it very well, very well may have changed the dynamics of that contest. Getting ready to call the team up, and it's a little bit. I mean, the guys are fatigued in there. We just went, you know, we were kind of getting thrown around a little bit in that first half offense. You know, Tim had two picks, just very uncharacteristic offensive football. And then it happens, you know, all of a sudden, boom, get in here, get in. I'm standing right there, and I said, oh, boy, here we go. Hey, let's, let's go, go, get in here. Let's go. Get in here right now. Get in here. Hey, we got 30 minutes for the rest of our lives. 30 minutes. 30 minutes for the rest of our lives. That's our pass. Boy, was he getting after his guys in the locker room, and he's getting after it here. Looking up top for Riley Cooper. And it falls incomplete. First half, it ain't happening. We get the ball. I promise you one thing. We're going to hit somebody, and we're taking it down the field for a touchdown. I guarantee you that. Guarantee. Look at me. Look at me. Let's go. We got 30 minutes. Let's go. For the rest of our lives. For the rest of our lives. Man, that gets me fired up. Let's go hit somebody, Dave Hill. You go hit somebody. I'll watch. <laughs> Yeah, he Give me a face mask and a mouthpiece. I mean, obviously that was that was an extreme. Oh my goodness. Folks just want in everyday life. I mean, he's just a guy that gets after it. He loves the game. Here's Moody off the right side. And he turned it over. Loose ball. Troy had it. And they still keep it. Well, the thing you gotta concentrate on, we've seen two fumbles now. One by the running back from Troy, Dewan Harris, and now Emmanuel Moody, the transfer from USC. When you get conditions and it gets just a little bit wet, you got to hold on to the football just a little bit tighter. Right here, outrunning the edge of the defense and a fantastic play by Brandon Lang. And we talked about it. Those two defensive ends are as good as any in the country. Cameron Sheffield and Brandon Lang of Troy. David McDowell came up with the loose football and Florida returns the favor that Troy gave them just moments ago. Now see if Troy, the Trojans, can capitalize. Brown. It's Williams. Not much happening. They haven't, they haven't even thought about going downfield. Well, you know, you're getting deep drops by Florida right now, especially on first down. I thought it was a good job of recognizing coverage by Cornelius Williams. Sit it down in the zone. Because if you start running through zone coverage, Dave, the quarterback delivers to you. That's when you take the knockout field. You go night-night. Second down and six now for the Trojans. Maurice Greer gets the handoff out over the 45 to the 47. That'll bring up a third down. Let's go to our network studios. Rob. Dave, it is the Evan Royster Show in Happy Valley. A 49-yard touchdown completion in the first quarter. A 12-yard touchdown run here in the second. 14-0 for the number 17, number 17 in the land. Thank you very much, Rob. Once again, Dave faced with third down and short, and it looks like Troy 
going to come up short again. And now it's time as a quarterback. If you're Levi Brown, you got to get those big offensive linemen in the huddle on third down and short. Look, I got to have it from you. I need some push up front. The guys are shoving you around, getting a face mask or two, but it's important to start converting on third down and short. Neil Brown and Larry Neil Brown, the offensive coordinator, and Larry, there you go. And Larry Blake, the head coach, both told us that you know the interior of their line. They return their two guards in their center, two new tackles on the outside, guys that they like a yeah. lot, but guys getting really their first solid action. And they didn't play well inside last week, and that's the strength of this offensive line for Troy. So you're looking for some push inside. They like the tackles now. Now you got to get some play from the veteran guys inside. Danny Franks, Steven Adams, and uh, Tyler Clark. Close to midfield on first down and 10. Southward off the left side. He has a first down and then some. Joe Hayden and A.J. Jones in on the tackle as you look at Larry Blakeney who is in elite company when it comes to victories at the same school. You look at Larry Blakeney sitting in the number four spot with 144 wins. We just saw Penn State taking on Syracuse today and Joe Pot 383. Three straight conference titles for Larry Blakeney. Brown will scramble close to the first down. I think he got it as Joe Hayden runs him out of bounds and they will move the chains again. Not known for his running ability, but they're smart with the football. If you're a quarterback, you get everything spread out, especially when a team plays you man to man and take defenders away from the line of scrimmage. You don't have to be real fast, just smart in where you run the football. Dewan Harris back in the game. Hey, Troy's on the move. Down to the Gator 26 yard line. Here's Harris fumbled on his last carry. Driving inside the 25 to the 24. Brandon Spikes in there trying to rip the football out of Harris's hands. Florida leading Troy 7 to nothing. First quarter of football, 2.06 to go. Dave Neal, Andre Ware, and Kara Capuano on a rainy, muggy afternoon at the Swamp. Brown looking up top for Jernigan, incomplete. Major right, the safety on coverage for the Gators. Is Florida on their heels defensively right now? Well, they, they? They've done an excellent job. Neil Brown, the offensive coordinator for Troy, doing a good job of mixing the play calling right now, keeping Florida off balance where you don't know if they're going to run the football or throw the football, and if they throw it, managing it in a short passing game. I like what they're doing offensively. Third down now coming up for the Trojans. Well, a third and eight. Mishandled Brown and Harris. Brown just falls to the turf. Well, you just want to get at worst a short gain to get your field goal kicker closer. And it looks like they're going to try uh, try a field goal here. Sam Glussman will come in. The senior out of Mobile was 20 out of 29 last year in the field goal department. He's a former walk-on who won the job. Missed his only attempt last week. 45-yarder on the way. It is good. And the Trojans are on the board. That had plenty of room. Plenty of distance. 4,000 Trojan fans. Made their way to Gainesville, Florida. Last uh, 2007, when these two teams met, 
Florida scored on their opening seven possessions. A nice snap, nice hole, and it just kind of makes its way right down the center. That one could have been good from a long way away. That drive, nine plays, covers 34 yards, three minutes and 48 seconds, capped off by the 45-yard field goal. Well, they answered our question. You got a turnover, and could, could they go down and get themselves some points to stay in this football game? And that's going to kind of take away a little bit of momentum from uh, the Florida team now up 7-3. But that man right there getting himself set and ready to get back into this football game. You talk about a gentleman that just loves the game of football. Can't say it enough. Light classroom load this, uh, this semester. And so he gets to spend a lot of time at the football complex studying film, dissecting things, and getting ready for, uh, for the next opponent for Florida. Cooper and James back for Florida. This will be James. And then kickoff return for a touchdown last week. James out to the 33 and dropped on the spot by Bryant McKissick. Well, we visited with Tim Tebow yesterday, and he told us, you know, I don't get on the receivers a lot. You know, I just tell them, hey, I'm going to come right back to you. And you saw Dante Thomas right here with a drop pass early. Deontay right there, nice touchdown reception. A man of his word, Tim Tebow, he goes right back to Deontay Thompson. Gator offense turned it over on a fumble by Emmanuel Moody on their last possession. Here's Tebow, the watch in your side. Tebow will keep it to the 40. Drop there by Cameron Sheffield, the defensive end. Who had 66 tackles last year, five and a half sacks. You got to feel like you're bringing down a fullback when you tackle Tim Tebow, 6'3", 240 pounds, and he gets turned up the field and look out. coordinator down on the field as he's also the offensive line coach. The inside handoff goes to Dents. Nothing happened there on second down. That'll bring up a third down now and a, and a couple. The Detroit Trojans head south and through one quarter of play have given the Gators all that they want. A couple of turnovers by each club have led to some points. But quarter number one is in the books. The number one ranked team in the country leads it seven to three. You look at the atrium area inside that Florida Gator locker room. All their Heismans and national championships on display as the team heads out into this massive facility. Third down and short. Tebow with a keeper will cross the 42 out to the 43, and that will be a first down for this Florida offense. Brandon Lang will get credit for the tackle. Well, this Florida offense, kind of the bonsai approach, you talked about it, up-tempo. There's Steve Adazio, the offensive coordinator. Is kind of That's kind of what he's brought to the mm -hmm. table is taking over for Dan Mullen. No doubt about it, and, and uh, he wants to go fast and be physical up front. Says the offense is built around the guys up front being tough. Tebow stands in the pocket, lost the football. Troy has it. Donnell Golden, the sophomore out of Quitman, Georgia, comes up with the Gators' second turnover. But he was the guy you remember that did not get outside for Deontay Thompson's touchdown receptions reception but he makes up for it here continuing to work and work against the left tackle there and finally getting to Tim Tebow and the smart thing he does is once he arrives he's not just trying to tackle Tim Tebow he goes for the football able to knock it out and now Troy set up with some pretty good field position in Gator territory at the 40 yard line
Going up top. Incomplete pass. Looking for the tailback. DeJuan Harris and flags come in. I tell you, there's laundry everywhere. Now, there's no face guarding penalty in college football. And A.J. Jones has got the responsibility of covering DeJuan Harris. So the officials got to talk this one over a little bit. Running stride for stride with him, and he just didn't turn around. But there is no penalty in college football for face guard. Pass interference, number 16, defense, 15 yard penalty from the previous spot, first down. Well, let's take a look at it here. I'm not sure I see where the pass interference comes in. Right here, well, oh, there it is, man. right there. Got to allow the receiver. Is there, or, can't come through the receiver as he's trying to make an attempt on the football. So there, Troy's going to get 15 free ones, making the most of another turnover. So first and ten now from the 25-yard line. Sean Southward, the freshman. In the game, but the pass to the near side dropped by Tavares Gill. And with that, let's go down the sidelines, check in with Kara Capuano. Kara? Well, guys, yesterday when we talked with Coach Adazio, he brought up the troubles with these early season games. He said the Gators are going to come out, expectations are going to be high. They don't come off the blocks quickly. How do they keep focus? Then on the Troy side, he said you're never really sure about who a team is until about the third or fourth week of the season. So a lot of uncertainty, and it obviously keeps the coaches up at night, especially for a game like this, Dave. Loose football. Brown has it, falls on it, flag is down at the line of scrimmage. A smart thing there by Levi Brown, just getting back on the football. You've got your team in a scoring position. You don't want to give up at least a, a, an attempt for a field goal here. There is no foul for illegal formation. The formation was legal. You know, Andre, what do you make of trying to adjust to a team that you don't know much about? Well, it's tough because you don't face them. You know, a lot. You don't see that uh, that style of play a lot, especially defensively. They can create a lot of things defensively, Troy, that will confuse you. But this is a different team than I watched on film, this Troy version, as opposed to what they did last week against Bowling Green. Timeout taken by Troy. This is a 30 second timeout. But I know this, that Urban Meyer will not be happy with the play of his team. No. He, he told us on Thursday and on Friday that his team really needs to be focused. A, the opponent was much better. B, we need to get ready ourselves. Well, you see the, the bad snap here, and you put it on the ground. Then you get the fumble by Emmanuel Moody. They turn that into three points, and then the forced fumble by Donnell Golden on Tim Tebow. With the pass interference call here by A.J. Jones, and it's just been a sloppy, First couple of minutes here in the first half for Florida at times, and that is not going to make that gentleman there happy. He likes it fast, clean football. Well, it has not been that at all. No. And you, 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 you talk about the weather conditions, it's not ideal with the rain coming down the way it is here early in the first half, but he'll say that's no excuse. You know, we, uh, we work in these conditions in practice, so we should be used to playing in, the, in, in this type of weather. Third down and 10. Well, you got an easy little throw to Austin Silvoy right there in the slot up top. Linebackers inside, just give it to him. They'll run the handoff to Harris inside the 20. Brandon Spikes with his third tackle this afternoon and it looked as though Larry Blakeney and company were just trying to set up a field goal from the middle of the field as the ball sits at the 20 yard line. He hit that 45 yarder earlier in the game in the first quarter and it was easy. 
This should be no problem. 37 yard attempt. From the senior out of Mobile, Alabama. Drop snap. Right through the hands of Austin Silvoy, the holder. Janoris Jenkins fell on top of him. Ironically, Austin Silvoy, the junior out of St. Augustine, Florida, played with Tim Tebow at Nice High School. Well, if you're Troy and you want to win one against the number one ranked team in the country, you can't do that. And welcome back to the Wrangler SEC Game of the Week. The Troy Trojans trail by four to the top-ranked team in America. 13.04 to go in the second quarter. And right after kickoff, the rains started to come down in a big way. And they have subsided somewhat, but still a wet afternoon. And balls are flying all over the place. That pass incomplete, looking for Chris Rainey. And down the sidelines, enjoying this weather. It's our own Kara Capuano. Kara. my job to, hello there I am I love my job today and I know sometimes Dave when I'm a fan at home it's hard to tell how wet it is down here by looking at the players look at me dripping head to foot <laughs> don't be criticizing their sloppy play how can they get anything done out here <laughs> well it has been a uh, display of miscues to this point this pass is caught David Nelson and he dropped the football but luckily for Florida it sails out of bounds Chris Bowens pushes him out of bounds. And the ball rolled a little bit closer to that first down marker, so it'll be third down in about a yard and a half. All right, well, you got to be impressed with Troy defensively, showing a lot of different things. And that was one of their keys to the game, mix the looks so that Tim Tebow and this Florida offense just can't sit back and tee off on you, make them think a little bit. But what I've been impressed with was the ability to rally up in the open field and make tackles on speedy, speedy players from Florida. Well, now the Gators will take a timeout. Both teams are using up their timeouts. They're dropping the football. I mean, it's been a, uh, a, a comedy of errors to this point. Yeah, it starts with a Troy turnover here, but Juan Harris, he puts it on the ground. Florida turns it into points, and Emmanuel Moody he fumbles the football. Troy comes away with a field goal. And right here, Donnell Golden getting to Tim Tebow for coming up with a fumble recovery. And I'll tell you what, you cannot put the ball on the ground. I don't care what the situation is weather-wise. Turn it over. That's a fast way for your opponent to get points. Larry Blake, he's won three Sun Belt championships in a row. The Florida Gators are Pretty good in their own right in terms of capturing championships as we take a look at today's road to the Dr. Pepper SEC Championship. And today we will look at that Florida history in the SEC Championship. Seven and two in championship games. They've won three of those since 2000. And of course last year the game with Alabama. You know I have the opportunity to do that game on radio and it is of all the games I've done over the years that was one of the best, if not best, championship games I've had a chance to see. <laughs> I gotta believe that uh, Troy kind of likes this weather. Slows those fast guys down a little bit. Troy, maybe there's some mutters. Here comes the blitz. Over the middle, it's the tight end. Hernandez couldn't believe that nobody was around. He kind of danced around looking for somebody to hit him, and nobody was there. Finally, Brandon Lang from his defensive end spot tackles him but not before the Gators pick up the first down now they blitz David McDowell the linebacker from the right side of the formation and that creates a big big window <laughs> for Aaron Hernandez bobbled snap Tebow Kipps keeps it after the gain of 15 he'll pick up nine more maybe 10 not El Golden trips him up close to the first down marker at the 35 yard line watching Florida on film if you see Tim Tebow and that little pump action that means they're going to that bonsai offense but here nice little quarterback draw right up the center of the field but then he starts making that little pump action that's speeding everybody up and they're going to get to the line of scrimmage and get a play run Debo's numbers just 45 yards through the air. A couple of guys have dropped balls on him. Jeff Dimps in to the left of Tebow. 
In motion is James. All oh, day to throw. Going down the middle. Cooper there. Touchdown, Florida. What's 36 up? yards on the touchdown strike from roommate to roommate. What's what's wrong with that delivery? You know, people talk a lot about that this offseason, the delivery of Tim Tebow. Got to mess with it, tinker with it. Uh-uh. This is well thrown. Troy, they're back in coverage. The safety's here in the corners. They can make a play, but you just mistime it. And Riley Cooper, all 6-3 of them, they're on the other end of that Tim Tebow pass. Point after. Up and good by Jonathan Phillips. Riley Cooper, who played with the flu last week, comes up with a touchdown grab. And the Gators needed a spark. Tim Tebow with a yet another touchdown pass. Florida gets a touchdown pass from Tim Tebow. They now lead Troy 14 to 3, 11 33 to go here in the second quarter. There is Riley Cooper. 36 career receptions now. How about this? Ten of them have been for touchdowns. I would say that Riley has been about as productive as you would want out of a wide receiver in that regard. Okay. Tebow on that drive, three out of three, 56 yards. Also had a nine-yard rush. Kickoff sails down to the seven-yard line. Jarrell Jernigan hit at the 20, breaks a tackle. Let's go back to that touchdown, Andre. But first of all, Tebow had all day. Well, he really did, and they take a look here. It's just cover one, and you see just locked on man-to-man. -man. They bring pressure, and they are actually zoned here, and now you've got tremendous coverage by Brian Willis, the corner there. The safety, Cortland Fuller, gets occupied with a route inside. He's there in coverage, but just missed times his jump. And Riley Cooper right there on the other end of it. They don't get there. They, they only rush three in that situation. Missed times the jump. It was excellent coverage. If you just time the jump, I don't think it's a touchdown pass. So here's Troy. Inside handoff goes to Dewan Harris. He will get maybe a yard. Joe Hayden comes up from his cornerback position to record the tackle. We'll see this Florida defense now. Toughness, we talked about it from the opening kick. A little easier to pin your ears back when you're up 14-3 than 7-3. Boy, pressure came immediately looking for Jernigan. Swinging around from his wide receiver spot, Will Hill on a blitz, put the pressure on Levi Brown. Let's go down to Karen. Guys, you were talking about the relationship between Riley Cooper and Tim Tebow, the roommates, and the roommates spent their Monday evening watching that thriller between Florida State and Miami, and they said they will sit there on the couch and talk about technique and do film study while watching other teams. No wonder there's unspoken communication now between those two. We'll talk about there was a particular route in that Florida State Miami game and they started talking about adjustments based on coverage. And you get a lot of balls thrown your way if you can adjust to what a quarterback likes to do. Yeah I don't even think he, he was the intended target on that pattern. Got an unfair advantage when you're the roommate of the quarterback and you happen to be a receiver. Delay a game against Number Troy. 12, offense five yard penalty remains third down. At Larry Blakey said he was just stunned by his team's performance in week one of yeah. Bowling Green. Said they're a much, much better football team than that. There are some questions they need to be answered, but yeah, they sliced and diced Bowling Green their first couple of possessions and then just had a flat tire the rest of the game. Went right down the field to open the game. Felt like they abandoned the run a little bit too early. They will run it here. Harris out to the 30-yard line. Gain of about 10 on the play. Brandon Spikes, tackle number four for the senior middle linebacker who came back to the Gators for a final campaign. And that will force 
a punting situation for the Trojans. Well, the easy part of this is just lining up in the formation to punt it with the conditions the way they are. A accurate snap and then the punter being able to field it or catch it and then get it out of there. So the easy part's just lining up. Goggins punts it away, bounces right to James. Good coverage by the Trojans at the 29-yard line is where Florida will start their next possession. Tim Tebow with a couple of touchdown passes already today. The man is as focused as anybody in college football. It has been a wet day here at the Swamp as Florida leads the Troy Trojans 14 to 3. It's our SEC Network Game of the Week. Dave Neal, Andre Ware, and Kara Capuano. Glad you can be with us from Gainesville, Florida. The Gators back on offense. Tebow out of the shotgun. Hand off to Brandon James. He's out to the 37-yard line. Tim Tebow started to get it together in the last drive. Three out of three. A couple of touchdowns today. Yep, to Deontay Thompson in the first one. And then here they show a man look back out in the zone. Backed out a little bit too late, allowing Raleigh Cooper to get deep. And Tim Tebow able to find him in the back of the end zone. Tebow's numbers, 81 yards. You saw the bottom line there. 30 straight games with a touchdown pass. Best among active players. Tebow will keep it out over the 40 to the 41 yard line. And the best power back in all of football right there, number 15. Look at the total yards, 146 for Florida. They put up 624 yards against Charleston Southern last week, 62 points, but 373 yards on the ground. An 11.2 average for Florida in that game. Three guys, Dems, Rainey, and Moody, all over 75 yards on the ground. Here's Dems to the 40, to the 30, and pushed out of bounds by Cortland Fuller. They will mark the ball back at the 21-yard line. Tell you what, excellent look right here. And you see the Pouncey, Pouncey brothers just right there, creating a hole. And Mike Pouncey, the right guard, just closing and collapsing things down inside. And then it's just the speed of Jeff Dimps here. Nice block by Aaron Hernandez as well. And now it's just off to the races. Well, there is speed and power. Dimps has great speed, but they say he's also a bruiser. But he's not afraid to take it between the tackles. Well, he wouldn't be either if you had those big guys up front and, and you had the speed of Jeff Dimps. He's more their complete back, which is kind of surprising when the coaches describe Jeff Dimps to us because he's just 5'8", 178 pounds, but they're not afraid to put him one-on-one -on -one with linebackers that he can block it up for Tim Tebow as well as, as you mentioned, run the football between the tackles. Well, Fuller will head to that Troy locker room as the Gators line up just outside their 20 yard line. There's that bonsai offense. We've seen uh, for the most part here the first half. No huddle look by Florida. Rainey left side making a couple of people miss to the 10 to the five and run out of bounds. They will mark it at the four yard line. Chris Bowens the Free safety pushes him out of bounds, but it will be first and goal Florida after the 17-yard pickup. Well, they get beat, give up leverage on the outside right here. Cameron Sheffield, the defensive end, gives up outside position, and the speed makes you pay for it. Rainey kind of messing up that yards per carry average. He had one carry last week, 76 yards and a touchdown. He's kind of messing that up a little bit. I like that 76 yards a carry average. Here's Tebow, will keep it up the middle. Touchdown, Florida. And 
Tim Tebow just took over fourth all by himself in the SEC career rushing touchdown list as he was tied with LSU's Dalton Hilliard before that touchdown run. That is number 45 on the ground for Tebow. Well, they stopped messing around and started doing what they do best, and that's get, uh, get out on the edges, get you spread out, and then unleash Tim Tebow on you on the goal line. Jonathan Phillips with the point after. Florida's lead, 21-3 now, 8-0-4 to go in the first half. Tim Tebow, you want a leader, you're looking at it. He's wearing number 15. Might as well have an S on that jersey somewhere. Still a little sprinkle in the air, but Gator fans now at least with a little bit of a smile on their face as they posted 21 points on the board. Two of those touchdowns coming here in the second quarter. Team Tim Tebow, two touchdown passes and a rushing touchdown as well. That last drive, Gators really made Troy pay. Five plays, 71 yards, two minutes on the dot. All rushing on that drive. Drive before Riley Cooper on a touchdown reception, and then they come back, and it's all on the ground. Here's Jernigan. Dropped at the 27 yard line. Well, all season long, Champion Apparel will be showcasing the tradition and history of the Southeastern Conference. Today, we'll take a look at Florida's history, which began back in 1906. Of course, three Heisman Trophy winners, Steve Spurrier back in 1996, or in 66, Werfel in 96, and of course, Tebow in 07. And those three national championships as well in 96, 06, and last year. Can they make it three out of four? That's called dominance. First and ten for the Trojans. Here's Brown. The ball's batted in the air and picked off. Janoris Jenkins, the sophomore out of Pahokee, Florida, who did not play in the opening game, had three interceptions a year ago in his first of 2009. Well, Levi Brown's just trying to get the football out fast, just take the snap and get it out, and you get a player. Justin Trotto gets a big paw on it. Trotto right here, you see him, it just deflects it, and it's Janoris Jenkins, the sophomore corner. He became the second true freshman, other than Joe, Hay Joe Hayden on the other side, to actually start at corner. On opening day, first it was Joe Hayden two years ago, and then now Janoris Jenkins, actually last season, youngster starting on the corners for Florida. Debo right away going up top. Here's Thompson, touchdown, his second of the day. 33 yards. like Thompson coming up a little bit gimpy after that touchdown reception but we talked with Urban Meyer Dave about when a turnover happens going up top and go and, and getting points and he says yeah we'll take the shot but a lot of teams like to play us in cover too well if you don't show them that look guess what's coming Gators trying to make it point number 28 off the foot of Jonathan Phillips the hold of Chaz Henry is good, and the kick is even better. And the Gators making Troy pay. Florida has now picked off a pass in 14 straight games. That is the best current streak in the country. And the Gators last year had 26 interceptions. The turnover margin is such a dominating factor in favor of Florida, plus 22 a year ago. And today they've made Troy pay every time they've come up with a loose football. Well, here you're going to see the coverage, and it's just three deep zone, but you got a player for, uh, for Troy that's going to come up in coverage. There, the play action just holds it enough, and it allows for Thompson to get deep on Brian Willis again and get behind the defense if you're a corner, peeking into the backfield with play action quarterback of Tim Tebow's caliber. He's going to make you pay every time. 
Tebow right now just having fun. Three touchdown passes here in the first quarter. This team was sluggish offensively, and Tebow said, you know what, enough of this. Let me just go ahead and just go ahead and get this game started. Yeah. It's like, let's quit messing around and play some football for real. And return taken by Chip Reeves out over the 20 to the 24 yard line. Well, we talked about Tim Tebow being an impact player. How much of an impact do you have on a game when you throw three touchdown passes and then you run for another one? I'd say he's got a little impact on this game. Well, Florida's offense starting to click now. 242 yards on 29 plays. First and ten for the Trojans. Here's Harris off the right side has plenty of running room out over the 35. They will mark it at the 38 yard line. 15 yard pickup. Best run of the day for the Trojans. Kyle Wilbur in the right tackle there just kind of giving him a lane to the outside closing things off with a nice block and allowing for Juan Harris to turn up the field. Here's Harris again out over the 40. Nice 25 yard line. And that's what the coaches want and expect to see from Dewan Harris. Yeah, they felt like he didn't get north and south last week. He was kind of dancing around in the hole and not really hitting it and doing what got him the job. And uh, they wanted to go more, go back to that a little bit more where he's running the football north and south as opposed to uh, east and west and trying to break every run. Well, they had 10 carries, eight yards last week. Troy amassed 41 yards on the ground. Down. That is the third or fourth ball that a Florida defender has got their hand on. I believe Tracto was the one who got a piece of that football. And he played in a great high school football program at Don Bosco Prep. Look at this. Actually, I think that's Carlos Dunlap yeah, inside. Dunlap, the defensive MVP of last year's yeah. national championship game. So now a third down and three coming up for Troy. Big down here for Troy. They'll go to Harris and he slips flag down however at the line of scrimmage on the near side. And then another late flag comes in from our umpire. As he talks to Tyler Clark the left guard for Troy. Prior to the snap, false start, 58, offense, five-yard penalty, third down. That's Tyler Clark, the team's best offensive lineman and former walk-on. Left guard just flinching just a little bit. Now third down and eight. Same play, Harris. That second and third effort got it real close to the first down marker, which sits at about the 48 yard line. They may be about a half a yard shy coming up on fourth down. Yeah, when you're down 28 3 and you're right around midfield, and it really becomes decision time. I don't think there's any hesitation here. Troy's going to stay on the field with their offense. Well, quarterback sneak will get it. My favorite short yardage play right there. Get low and wedge inside. Not from this formation, though. And the snap. Levi Brown was walking toward the bench, and the ball was snapped from Danny Franks. It hit Harris and fell to the ground. I think it was designed to kind of try to confuse Florida and make it look as though he's trying to get a player call a timeout to distract Florida and direct snap the football to Dewan Harris 
and it got there a little bit faster than Dewan Harris expected right here. Yep, that's exactly yep. what happens. He didn't handle the football. Hits him right around the face mask, and guess what? Florida football, Jermaine Cunningham, the big senior defensive end, comes up with a fumble recovery, setting up Tim Tebow one more time. I'm with you. You got a half a yard, just a quarterback sneak. Here's Tebow trying to make Troy pay. That ball looked like it might have slipped out of his hands. T Tim Tebow today in his first three possessions. Went three of seven, only 25 yards. He did have the touchdown pass to Deontay Thompson. But then look at him since the first three. The last three possessions, four, four, 91 yards, and he's he's got a nose for the end zone, whether it's uh, through the air or running them in himself. Also on the ground today, Tebow, eight carries, 29 yards, and a touchdown. Here's a pitch to James trying to get the corner. We'll get about six yards on the play before he's run out of bounds. Yeah, we can get to that option a lot of different ways, whether it's the inside guys of Dems and Rainey or James kind of taking a step back, or it's the slot who takes a step back and Tim Tebow brings the option to the slot receiver, and then the slot receiver becomes the pitch man. They find ways to get the speed in space. Third down and three. Kibo will keep it. Powers his way inside the 25. Lowers that shoulder and picks up an extra three or four yards on the play. Right. Chris Bowen is going to see Tim Tebow when he goes to sleep tonight. You see it here, just a nice quarterback draw, eyes down the field and pull it. And here, I'm going to take you off. You're a defensive back. I fear you not. First and ten, Florida. Evo hands it off. Nowhere to run for Demps. He's dropped for a loss of three, maybe four yards on the play. Well, this is reminiscent. This, this running today by Tim Tebow is reminiscent of what I saw a couple of years ago when he carried it yeah. a career high 27 times at Ole Miss. Well, listen to the pads here, big fella. Man. Hear him clacking way up here in the press box. You know, for a guy who threw for 10,000 yards or so in your career, you sure like to run the football. <laughs> <That's it. laughs> You're a lot of talk. <laughs> you pull it down every once in a while. Here comes Dents around the right side. Gets a good block by Cooper. Touchdown. Riley Cooper should get half the points on that. Raleigh Cooper is blocked. He blocked his helmet off. And if Brian Willis has had the red shirt freshman, he has had a nightmare first half for Troy. Right here, getting speed once again out on the edge. And the block right there by the wide receiver, Raleigh Cooper. That's wanting to do it. The th playing team football right there. That's amazing. Riley Cooper, Urban Meyer, and Tim Tebow both say that he is. Perhaps the most underrated receiver in the country. With everything that he brings to the table. Point after up and good by Jonathan Phillips. And well now Florida's putting it together. That's not something that a lot of receivers, that's why you can get so fired up about it. Receivers don't like to block that much. I mean, they may hold a block here and there. But the intensity in which Riley Cooper goes after the cornerback. Brian Willis here it just blocks him out of the frame that allows Jeff Dimps to turn the football up the field and get into the end zone. Well this was all set up by an errant play on fourth down by Troy on fourth down at about a half a yard they had an opportunity to pick up the first down tr tried a little trickery and it didn't work and Florida made him pay. Let's go down to Caracapuano. 
Well, guys, you were talking about Riley Cooper. I don't know how long you were able to stay on the shot, but his hat got knocked off, and then he went absolutely nuts. You want to talk about a player being fired up after making an aggressive stance. He was in Brian Willis's face, ran away without his helmet, then he runs into offensive coordinator Steve Adazio, who gave him some kind of a body block, almost knocked Cooper off of his feet. It was quite a display. You can really feel the energy and the passion and how much Cooper loved the physical part of being a football player. I guarantee you he's going to get acknowledged for that block in tomorrow's film study. That kickoff comes down to Chip Reeves. And we'll see right of Stone Mountain, Georgia. Got hammered at the 20. Let's go back to our SEC Network Studios in Rob Stone. Coming up on the Cellular South Halftime Report. Intra-SEC play begins. We'll have a preview of all the SEC activities going on. Alabama beat Virginia Tech last weekend. Tech back in action. And a great hoops matchup on the gridiron. UNC at UConn. All that coming up at the break. Thank you very much, Rob. Look forward to our cellular South halftime report. Tom Ritter making a call. Unsportsmanlike conduct, number 36. Kicking team, 15 yards. Jenkins, the junior cornerback from Florida. What's happened here? Why has Florida in the last, say, 15 minutes of game action started to click? What happened? Well, they started holding on to the football. That happened first. And then they got back to what they do best. And that's turning the football game over to the big guys up front. Get physical up front. Get the speed and space. Create a few holes. And let's dance in the end zone. First down and 10 for Troy. Here's Harris. You know, Urban Meyer keeps talking about, he always comes up with ways to motivate his guys, and he likes to talk about chess, and when they get to a point in the game, you know, checkmate is something he likes to say, meaning they, they win the game. They've now got, got all the momentum in their favor. Is that a checkmate? I think this play right here, the last touchdown pass, might be a checkmate when you, uh, the pass to Deontay Thompson. Going over, they, and the players all buy into it as well. They walk by him and say, checkmate, and you can just see this smile yeah. come across the face of Urban, Urban Meyer. At, pra at practice, guys always throw that term out when they're scrimmaging. Brown stands in the pocket, pass over the middle, looking for Jarbo off his fingertips and incomplete. That's a pass that Levi Brown hit last week against Bowling Green. Right over the linebacker's head before you get to the, the safety on that hash mark. Hit it last week, and it's an easy pass for him, one he's comfortable with. Going to have to start opening things up just a little bit against Ford. Look at Urban Meyer, three-time national coach of the year, and a master motivator. But the subtle things yeah. with him are impressive. Very, very impressive. Yeah, you don't even Urban know Meyer. he's motivating you, but he is. Oh, yeah. Brown stands in the pocket. It's Harris. The one out to the 44, stopped there on third down and 10. So he'll be about two yards shy. Ryan Stamper, along with A.J. Jones, bring him down. You know, I was kind of joking with him. We got a chance to meet with Coach Meyer yesterday, and I was down in the tunnel, taking a little tour of the facility and looked out that gate into the stadium, and boy, I got kind of chills. And I told him, I said, you know, my next life, when I'm recruited all over again, I might let you recruit me. I was a Gator yeah. at one point in my life already. You know, Dickinson Gator back in high there school. There you go. <laughs> You've got all the gear. I don't know if it fits, but I you might, got all the gear. I might let him recruit me. Troy will punt it away, or at least they are in punt formation. They will kick it away. Here's Brandon James. He will let that hit at the 15 and roll inside the five. All right. SEC Network Cruise next week. We will head over to the great state of Alabama and check out the Crimson Tide. That'll be next Saturday, our SEC Network Game of the Week, presented by Wrangler, North Texas, and the Mean Green roll into Tuscaloosa to face Nick Saban's Crimson Tide. Catch all the action beginning at noon Eastern right here on the SEC Network Game of the Week, presented by Wrangler. And, yeah, I'm hoping Nick Saban might uh, get down in that pocket and buy us dinner after right, this contract take, take extension. Care us, take care of us a little bit. They looked physical. Yeah. Oh, they, well, they Last impressive. week Ooh. against Virginia Tech. Oh, did they look physical. 
The Gators backed up on the goal line. They're going to go for it. Up top, Riley Cooper stops his run. That's because there is a flag down at the line of scrimmage. Our umpire throws a flag right at our center, Marquise Prior Pouncey. To the snap, false start, 74, offense. Half the distance to the goal, first down. Well, a lot of a uh, lot of offensive coordinators, when you're backed up down here, they'll elect to run the football or try to get the football down the field. Take a shot because maybe you get pass interference or maybe you know what? You connect with a Riley Cooper on a on a nine route, a streak down the sideline for a big play. So not against uh, taking that shot. And it's kind of kind of ironic that an offensive line coach would do that. You know, usually they're knock somebody off the ball and create some room. I like what uh, what Steve's doing. Here's Tebow out of the end zone. Takes that over the five. David McDowell, the linebacker, will get credit for the tackle. But to follow that up with Riley Cooper, why not? You know, so much has been made about how fast the speedsters are, Jeff Dimps and Chris Rainey. But you talk to anybody on the Florida team, and they right say there. Riley Cooper runs step for step with those guys. Matter of fact, Cooper laid the block for Brandon James's kickoff return for a touchdown last week and then outran James to the end zone. And <laughs> they called him stupid fast. Yeah. Here's James in motion. Tebow will keep it. Oh, the Tebow move. Out over the 20 yard line. Tebow, 245 pounds, dancing around like he's about a buck 80. You know, we talk about Riley Cooper and what he means to this team, but he also meant quite a bit to the Florida Gator baseball team. He was signed a free agent contract in the offseason with the Texas Rangers, but decided to come back and play some football in his final campaign. A fantastic athlete. His father was a good baseball player as well. He played at Oklahoma State in college. Here's Brandon James to the 37 yard line. Boris Lee able to drag him down. But Riley Cooper's a guy that uh, certainly means a lot to this team. We've talked about him being Tim Tebow's roommate, but there's his baseball numbers at 247. But well, the scouts love his his size and his strength, and certainly his speed. You know, I mean, they're they're a guy they're willing to invest a little bit of money and time into this young man. Well, he's going to have a decision to make at some point, shortly after uh, the season's over, because I think he's an NFL type player. It's the size, 6'3", 215 pounds. You mentioned the speed to go along with it, and he catches the football as well as any wide receiver we've seen this season certainly so uh, I think he's going to have a decision to make whether or not he wants to play football or baseball. You know with his blocking ability he reminds me a little bit of Pittsburgh's Heinz Ward. The way he'll get after it not only catch it but block you. Speaking of Cooper and catching it <laughs> out over midfield. There's a little private war going on right there as Karen described with Cooper and Willis the cornerback from Troy. That'll move the chains as Florida's into Troy territory. Dave Neal, Andre Ware, Kara Capuano from Gainesville. It's her SEC Network Game of the Week. Gators in control at 35 to 3, trying to add to it right before halftime. That pass behind Aaron Hernandez. That'll stop the clock with 37 seconds to go. You look at a guy that is uh, the coaches, Urban Meyer and Steve Adazio, are having a hard time. Aaron Hernandez is one of their best players overall in this football team, but he's their only tight end. And they're trying to maximize him without losing him. It was an honorable mention All-American last year at the end of the season. Was rated the number one tight end uh, recruit in the nation out of high school. Bristol Central in Bristol, Connecticut. Debo over the middle on cue. There's Aaron Hernandez. Not much happening. Pickup of about five. Aaron Hernandez. Oh, they spread the ball around. So well. Tim Tebow, then they go to Riley Cooper. Jeff Dimps touches it to Rainey. Florida. That is their third and final charge timeout of this half. And just when this you will forget be a 30 about them. Second timeout. When you forget about them, they go to Hernandez and maybe and throw a sprinkle a little Brandon James in there as well. Tim Tebow today got off to a slow start, as did his team, but then they started going. And clicking on all cylinders, Tebow was the catalyst. That's the first touchdown pass to Thompson. Then to Cooper, and then he's going to take things in his own hands, run one in. Well, the guy can just flat out play football. 
in the opening half today. Tebow, 10 out of 17, 149 yards, three touchdowns. On the ground, he's carried it 11 times for 60 yards and a touchdown. You know, Tebow, in terms of his career percentage, it's it's remarkable. He's up around 65 percent in terms of completing passes. You look at his total touchdowns, second in school history, trailing Danny Werfel by seven at this point. But here's a guy that last year completed 64 percent of his passes, 30 touchdowns, and only four interceptions. Tebow will keep it. Trying to get a block on the corner. Stiff arm will get out of bounds. He picks up the first down. 22 seconds to go. Good block by Brandon James to help him pick up an extra five yards. Smart play by the senior quarterback. You know, usually you, and you wait for him to take on a guy in the open field because he's not going to shy away from the contact. But knowing the clock, trying to put more points on the scoreboard, step out of bounds and save the time. Debo has all day to throw over the middle to Cooper who sits down at the 20 yard line had he kept his feet he could have picked up another 10 yards perhaps more. All right, the clock stops in college football for the change to reset. Order ready to go. Quick snap. Tebow throws near side. Cooper this time he stays in bounds. Florida out of timeouts. Eight seconds, seven seconds. Tebow trying to get everybody to the line of scrimmage. I don't think they're going to be able to get a playoff. Well, the officials slow to set the ball and they, they don't. That's the end of the first half. And Tebow is beside himself. Oh, can't believe it. You know, I, and I, I know what he's thinking right now. As a quarterback, you can never, ever, ever score enough points in the first half of a football game. How many times have you been a part of a game where you think, oh, this is a mauling, you're up 35-3, and then all of a sudden here comes Troy in the second half. Never enough points. Let's go down to Carroll. Coach, a bit of a slow start for the Gators. What turned it around into that second quarter where you went off? Uh, great defense. It was real slow, sloppy. And you, you got to give them. They were playing a talented team, and they they changed up. They did some good stuff on defense that they've not shown. So uh, uh, it's great defense got us back in this game. You warned us Troy was for real. Well, Troy's got a chance. They're defending champs. That's a good coach, good talented team. Thank you so much, Thanks. Coach. All right, Kara. Thank you very much. The calm and cool and collected Urban Meyer. It's halftime. And let's go to Rob Stone in the studio for the Cellular the South Halftime Report. Rob, take it away. Thank you, Dave, Andre, Kara. Welcome back to the Wrangler SEC Game of the Week on a soggy day in Gainesville, Florida as the number one ranked team in the country, the Florida Gators, looking for their 12th consecutive victory, which would tie a school record. Dave Neal back alongside Andre Ware, our Heisman Trophy winner. And Andre, we talked about the beginning of this game, what Florida was going to do, what they expected. Urban Meyer said his team really needed to be focused and ready to go today. What, what do you make of the first 30 minutes? Well, they got off to a slow start. The conditions weren't ideal. They put the football on the ground, turned it over a couple of times. But uh, all of a sudden, they got the focus that they needed or talked about. And then they went on a run. 35 points here in the first half, only giving up a field goal. And Florida got themselves rolling. Well, let's take a look at some of those uh, moments in the first half. Brought to you by Nike, Nike Pro Combat, and Tim Tebow was the story. Yep, first touchdown pass to Deontay Thompson. Then he goes over the top to one of his favorite targets in Riley Cooper. Then decided to take things or matters into his own hands and run one in. Later, he comes back to Deontay Thompson again. Florida with the 35 points. Up now at halftime, 35-3. Well, Andre, let's take a look at our Crystal first half stats. Crystal, nothing like it. And you see Troy, 41 total yards on the ground last week against Bowling Green. They've improved on that somewhat. But overall, you may not feel like it if you're a Florida fan, but this defense 
Only 71 yards allowed in the first half. It, it just didn't feel like that. No, it didn't. And, you know, you go to average yards per play for Troy, it's just over two yards per play. Florida, 8.2. So there's a huge difference there. They've got to start by moving the football. But first, they got to get a stop here early in the second half, get the football back and find their way to the end zone. It's not bad enough if you're Troy, it's 35 to three, but Florida gets the opening kick. Here's James, he's met at the 30, breaks a tackle, and run out of bounds at the 40. Nice return by Brandon James, a 28-yard return. Time to go back downstairs, check in with Kara Capuano. Kara. Well, guys, I had an opportunity to catch up with Coach Blakeney as he was running out of the tunnel out here for the second half, and his message to the Trojans, very simple. Let's get one stop. Let's get one drive. As you mentioned, they're trying to get well. Troy wants to discover who they are, and he said, he warned us, the Swamp was not exactly the best place to get that done. Well, they certainly have their hands full today. Tim Tebow coming back out. Only played a half last week against Charleston Southern. Get a little bit more work here against Troy. First pass to Cooper. Catches it at midfield. First down Florida inside Troy territory at the 48. Give him 13 on the pickup. Xavier Lamb on the tackle. Boy, they, they have found a matchup that they like. And Brian Willis, not trying to pick on him, but he is having trouble with Riley Cooper. And Tim Tebow kind of sensing it, sniffing it out, and he keeps keeps going to, uh, to Riley Cooper. Loving that matchup. Well, that's the corner, the cornerback position that Troy was a big concern coming into the season. A couple of guys that haven't played a lot of snaps for Troy. One a redshirt freshman, one a junior college transfer. Here's Tebow out to the 44-yard line. He had about four on the play, brought down by Donnell Golden. That's five tackles now for Golden. I thought it was a cornerback, Mr. Willis, in there coming, sliding in from that cornerback spot. He saw his first action of his career, of his red shirt year, last week against Bowling Green. So he is brand new to that Trojan secondary. Here goes Rainey. Dropped at the 33-yard line. Donnell Golden again on the play for Troy. But now that offensive line creating just a little bit of space. Not a lot, but just enough. Well, what you want to do is at some point allow the offensive line to really take over a football game, and that's exactly what's happening right now. You get a 35-3 lead, and you just go to the big fellas up front, and that's when they can really start to have fun. Carl Johnson, the sophomore left tackle, clearing the way there. First down and 10. Little play action. Tebow under pressure gets sandwiched as he throws it out of bounds, but three white jerseys hit him at the same time. Looks like Ken Law, Cameron Sheffield, two of the three in the mix. Well, you finally get some pressure in the face of Tim Tebow. A couple of uh, Trojan defenders there, and Brandon Lang, a bunch of guys in his posse showing up. But Tebow just kind of shrugs it off, throws it away, and comes back here on, on second down as if it doesn't phase him. Smart, smart football player. Second down and 10. Little option to James. Loose football, and Florida has it. Who snagged it out of the midair? Mike, Mike Pouncey. Pouncey. Yeah, the big sophomore, one of the twins. The right guard, he's right there to come back, actually save Florida a turnover. You we'll see him here blocking down inside and then trying to kick out. Brandon James puts the foot, his helmet, Chris Bowens puts his helmet right on the football. And Brandon James is carrying and the big fella there, hey, come on, let's go, let's go do this. The Pouncey boys in the middle, Marquise and Mike. Marquise the center, Mike the guard. Tebow up top looking for James. Touchdown, Florida. What a catch. Well, they put pressure on Brian Willis, two receivers, and he's got to kind of got to guess 
which one to go and get. And Brandon James, when you start guessing and just thinking a little bit, it's too late. The speed takes over, and you cannot go track down Brandon James once he's a step or two by you. Well thrown ball by Tim Tebow. Point after up and good by Jonathan Phillips. And the Gators now lead it 42 to 3. 32 yard touchdown strike. Tim Tebow to Brandon James. That's four of those through the air for that man, Mr. Tebow. 42 to 3. Some happy Gator fans. Florida, which struggled in the first quarter, was 7 to 3 at the end of 15 minutes. Man, how things have changed. Brandon James on the 32 yard touchdown reception. CC fans, just a reminder later today, we'll be naming the Wrangler five star player of the game. Stay tuned for that. Might not be hard to figure out. Here's Maurice Greer with some good running room out over the 40 to the 45 yard line, and a flag comes in back at the 20. Be a 35 yard return, but it will be heading back. Tom Ritter's been somewhat busy this afternoon, our referee. During the return, illegal block in the back, number 86 of the receiving team, 10 yard penalty, first down. Andre, let's go back to that touchdown one more time. Well, it starts with a, with a free safety right here. You're going to see him take a step down and inside, and then now you get the routes. Pressure on the defense. Down the seam, you get Riley Cooper on a nice little in route, and now Brian Willis has got to guess which one to take, and it's, he guesses wrong. A little stutter step, the ball's in the air for Brandon James, and six points, Tim Tebow making him pay. Sean Southwood with the carry around the right side, gets about eight on the play. Troy just starts to need, need some first downs. Well, you just start that way, moving the chains and keeping Florida off the field, and you got to have points now at the end of drives if you're if you're Troy to try to establish some type of rhythm here in the third quarter. Second down and short. DeJuan Harris in the backfield. In motion, Andrew Davis. Brown will throw to Davis off his hands incomplete. That'll bring up third and short. Joe Hayden on the coverage. Man, it's a nice little pick route for Andrew Davis coming across in motion. The other two receivers, slot receivers to that side. Gonna set a pick for him, and he was out and around it. If he makes a nice little grab, it'd be a nice pickup, but can't hold on to the football. Jernigan took the snap. The wide receiver moved in, took the snap, direct snap. Little handoff on the inside to Southwood. Not much happening there, but Jernigan, probably their best offensive player. Of course, school record 77 grabs last year. Yeah, he's small, but he can really, really run. And you mentioned it broke a 40-year-old school record with those 77 receptions last season. Start to see the body language right there. Troy Trojans, there is frustration settling in a little bit. They had second and short and end up punting the football away. Goggins gets it off. Good high kick, fair catch called for by Brandon James back at the 38 yard line, and that's where the Gator offense will take over. 48 yard kick. Well, it's a big weekend of college football. Some headlines this past week. Oklahoma State with a great win over Georgia moves up to number five. BYU with a win over Oklahoma moves up to nine. And how about Oklahoma? Landry Jones will take over for the injured Sam Bradford. And, of course, tonight on ESPN, USC and Ohio State, number three, number eight. What do you think, Andre, of that one tonight? Well, i, I got to like the Trojans in that football game. You know, they, they looked sharp last week. It took them a little while to get going against San Jose State, but Ohio State struggling a little bit against Navy. USC can run the football as well. Here's Cooper on an end around. Stumbles, 
but gets it to midfield. Lost his helmet. First down, Florida. Chris Bowens runs him out of bounds. Doesn't phase Riley Cooper one bit. Hey, fix that up for me. Let me get back to business. Well, right here, just a nice little end around, and they block it up well. You got Jeff Demps out throwing a block. Oh, I tell you, Chris Bowens, he closed the gate. The gate brain. was open. It closed the gate in front of the ball. He did it. You know, one of the things that we heard over and over again from uh, Jeremy Rowell, the defensive coordinator of Troy, is we can't afford to miss tackles. Brandon Lang had Cooper for about a five-yard loss, couldn't hold on. Another missed tackle. This is going to be a big play for Amarius Hines inside the 30, down to the 24-yard line. And there's Bowens again, the senior out of Columbus, Georgia, the safety, having to make a ton of tackles today. Well, well I'll tell you what, when, it's, when your safety's making a lot of tackles, it's going to be a long day because that means the ball's getting to the third level. You start missing them. Cortland Fuller right here, who has not had his best game. And now you're turning it over to the free safety. That makes for a long afternoon. Rainey to the left of Tebow. Here is Rainey, dancing around to the 20. Stays on his feet and falls forward to the 15-yard line. Nearly broke three tackles. And they're going to that bonsai offense right at the line of scrimmage. But you see Rainey here behind the big fullback. Nice block. Kind of gets his pad level low. And everybody else stopping before the whistle. Not Chris Rainey. Rainey stays in the game. We'll get the handoff again to the 10. Down to the 5. They will mark it just outside the goal line by inches. Yeah, they can put together a pretty good four by one relay. Rainey, Demps, James, and pick one. Riley Cooper. Look at this right here. You got the fullback, TJ Pridemore, who's opening things up, but the receivers blocking on the edge allows Chris Rainey to turn up. TJ Lawrence, the red shirt freshman from Lakeland, Florida, out blocking out in front. Nice job. Justin Tratto, a defensive lineman, in it tied in. They'll give the handoff up the middle to Rainey. He loses two or three yards. He is messing with that yards per carry average again. And flags come in. After the play, looks like unsportsmanlike conduct coming up against Troy. I couldn't see who it was. A couple of guys in there getting... Andre, you said it, the body language yeah. is starting to say a lot right low, now for low, Troy. A little frustration, Dave, settling in. Brandon Lane kind of pleading his case. Don't know if he's uh, the actual player they're going to throw the flag on, but he's certainly pleading his case. Well, they picked the flag. Oh, here we go. After the play was over, personal foul, number 91, defense. Half the defense is to the goal. First down. Was, was indeed Brandon Lane. So first and goal from the one for Florida. We'll set the first down marker on the far side. Well, do we see Superman again in this situation? Now he's already thrown four touchdown passes and run for one. Why not, you know, account for a sixth? Just having fun on a Saturday afternoon, number 15. Tebow lofts it up in the corner, looking for Hernandez. Incomplete off his fingertips. Like to check in the defensive end, Justin Trotto, number 94, and he was creeping across the back of the end zone. You see him there in the huddle. So keep an eye out for me. Yeah, if you're having fun, you're up 42 to three. You like to get get the big fella a touchdown reception. This goes back to the fact they only have one tight end in yeah. Aaron Hernandez, and in this jumbo package, first and goal type situation, they need that second tight end, and it's Trotto. Handoff to Chris Rainey. Touchdown, Florida. 
Rainey and Dimps, Dimps and Rainey, both sophomores. We're going to see a lot of those two in the next couple of seasons. Jonathan Phillips on for the seventh time and his point after is up and good. He's eight of nine in week one. He's seven out of seven here in week number two. That drive, seven plays, 62 yards, just over two minutes. The Gators are rolling at the swamp. It's 49 to three. At the Swamp in Gainesville, Florida. Top rank, Florida 49, Troy 3. Dave Neal, Andre Ware, Kara Capuano as Florida put in the end zone just moments ago after a 62-yard drive. Chris Rainey with a one-yard touchdown run. And Troy, which played well in the first quarter, or survived, I should say, in the first 15 minutes. Just not enough firepower to play with these Florida Gators. See the look on Brandon Lang's face. Frustration. Caleb Sturgis kicks it away. Gonna go to Maurice Greer. Greer to the 20 after the 25 yard line. Fans, don't miss the third annual SEC Big East Invitation. will be held at Madison Square Garden in New York City on December 9th and at the St. Pete Times Forum in Tampa on the 10th. Now, the two night men's college basketball event begins with a doubleheader in New York City with Georgia and St. John's, Kentucky and Yukon. Then the following night in Tampa, it's DePaul and Mississippi State. Then Syracuse at Florida. Tickets on sale now. Visit SECBigEastInvitational.com for more details. Pretty good little. No hoops, actually. Yeah. Huh? It's hard to believe they'll start practicing here in about uh, a month. Handoff goes to Dewan Harris. Brandon Spikes. A little tussle on the outside. I want to mess around with that big fella. He and lot, he, co coaches were talking about him coming back, and you know, a lot of guys when they come back for their senior year, they kind of don't really have the motor or the practice habits that you like. Didn't have to worry about that with big Brandon Spikes. He is uh, he has shown up for work. Motor's been high every day. Yeah, they, they, the quote was, he's been an awesome teammate. Levi Brown. He will be dropped back at the 22-yard line. Carlos Dunlap, the first man on the spot, along with Jermaine Cunningham. Well, in the SEC last week, it was a good start. The league drops one game. That happened to be the Georgia-Oklahoma State game. And well, the conference matchups begin, of course, South Carolina and Georgia. A lot of folks looking at that, want to see if those two teams will break out of their offensive funk. Yeah. And, of course, later tonight, uh, later this afternoon, UCLA and Tennessee, Andre. It's going to be a better game than people think, South Carolina and Georgia. I think South Carolina is going to come to play. On third down, Brown's pass incomplete, looking for Harris. But, uh, you know, Vandy and LSU tonight. It's a big game. You can see that on ESPNU. How about that first one? UCLA, yeah. and we were at Tennessee last week. Good, solid football game they played against Western Kentucky, but they will have their hands full today against the Bruins. And the one on the bottom, Mississippi yeah. State and Auburn. Dan Mullen, the former offensive coordinator here, taking over Mississippi State. Big win uh, last week, put up 45 points. Gene Chizik beat Louisiana Tech in his opener, put up 37 points. James bobbles it. Oh, Brandon oh James. A flag down. This one's coming back. Well, it's unfortunate. He took a kickoff back last week for 85 yards, and then this one's going to come back, though. And that's the man that leads the special teams units for Florida. 
There's two flags down. One came down early at about the 25-yard line on the far hash. And there's another one on the near side at about the 35. This Florida team is... Uh, it's a lot to worry about when you play them. I mean, forget about Tim Tebow for just a second, which you really can't if you're a defensive coordinator. And Jeremy Roll, he's, he's had his hands full today with weapons. There were two holding fouls on the play. The holding foul on the return is going to be declined. The other holding foul, number 23, kicking team, post scrimmage kick spot, excuse me, against the receivers. <laughs> Post scrimmage kick spot. First down. Tom's had to do that a lot today. I'm going to cut him some slack. He's we been busy he today. Right. We knew what he meant. See Brandon James here fielded, and we're trying to find right there. It looks like number 26 for Florida, Lorenzo Edwards. They've been uh, just got a little bit of jersey there. Oh, that's a tough lick right there on Brandon James. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe the big, yeah, the biggest hit of the day yeah. on a Florida player. Brandon James has had a couple of kickoff returns for touchdowns called back. Finally got that kickoff return for a touchdown last week. As we look at John Brantley coming on the field, as Tim Tebow will call it an afternoon. You and I were kind of joking about John Brantley. He didn't have a chance to go anywhere else, did he? No. I mean, he was going to be a Florida Gator. Dad was an All-American linebacker here. His uncle. Another great Gator in his own right. Scott, David Nelson catches that pass. Brantley in the opener, 8 out of 12, 67 yards, couple of TDs. Ran for 45 yards, 44 yards on six carries. And another flag is down the middle of the field. Father was a former quarterback here. His yeah. uncle was the uh, was the linebacker. Scott, former All-American. Then he played for Kerwin Bell. Play was over. Personal foul, number 58. Offense, 15-yard penalty. Second down. You mentioned the fact that John Brantley played for Kerwin Bell, who was a quarterback here at Florida in high school. So he he was he was coming to Florida. <laughs> There's no doubt about it. But he happens to be a very talented young man, and they are in good hands with John Brent. Pretty good day for Tim Tebow, and this is uh, this is an average day. Four touchdown passes, touchdown rushing, and second. And let's call it 20 here for the Gators over the far hash passes caught. Justin Williams, the junior out of Folkston, Georgia, makes the catch up to the 25-yard line. And talking to Urban Meyer yeah. about John Brantley and what he's going to bring to the table, not necessarily, but we're talking kind of about the future as well, is that it will be a different offense next year than what we see now just because the skill set's a little bit different. And John Brantley, he says, this team's in good hands with him. No doubt about it. And we, we talked to him yesterday, and he, was, he mentioned the fact he pointed to the 06 team when Chris Leak was the quarterback here, and it'll have that kind of look with John Brantley under center or as the quarterback of this Florida team. Brantley makes a couple of guys miss. Can't make a third miss, though. Donnell Golden will bring Brantley down behind the line of scrimmage. Well, that's where you want to just get rid of the football right there. You make one guy miss, a second guy miss, find somewhere to put it in the stands. He's got a couple of family members here. Just sail it into the hands of one of them. So fourth down and 16 for the Gators. They'll have to punt it away. Wobbly kick from Chaz Henry. It'll bounce out of bounds at the 46 yard line. So the Gators in complete control, 49 to three. We'll be back in a moment. It is, uh, remember coming in here last year for the opener and getting ready to meet with Coach Meyer and he says, before we talk, you guys got to go downstairs and check out this new complex. It's Sweet. awesome. And it, he was, he was right on. Levi Brown over the middle, incomplete, looking for Josh Jarbo. That'll bring up second down and 10. Let's take a look at our game summary. 
Brought to you by Woodman of the World Life Insurance Society of Omaha, Nebraska. And a 7-3 score after one quarter of play. And then Florida put their foot on the pedal. 28 in a second. And really, Tim Tebow put his foot on the pedal. And you just got to get first downs if you're Troy. And put some drives together. Get something positive happening. And you need some confidence going forward from this week to next. Harris into the heart of that defensive line. It's so fast. Justin Tratto, he, he is having a magnificent football game. Tip, tipped pass early that resulted in an interception. Saw him check himself in on the goal line as a, a tight end. And a fumble recovery. And a fumble recovery to go along with it. He's had a nice football game. So third down to nine as Troy looks to the sidelines. Laycock at three. Here's Brown. Steps and fires. Pass is caught by Tobias Gill, the junior out of Mobile, Alabama. Well, that's a nice throw as well. We talked about it. He tried to go earlier to Josh Jarbeau right behind the linebackers and in front of the safeties and it was down the right side of the formation here it's just over the linebackers in front of the safeties but on the left side well thrown well timed football by Levi Brown. Gill had eight catches in the opener for 102 yards. Here's Harris. Pick up three on the play. Nice little drive right now that uh, Troy's putting together. Trying to keep this Florida defense honest where you can't just tee off and come after the quarterback by running the football. See a lot of clean pants on the field for Florida at this point. It's Urban Meyer and Charlie Strong getting some Second teamers, some work. Jay Howard in there, the sophomore out of Apopka, Florida. That pass is caught down around the 17 yard line by Zach Markham, the senior from London, Kentucky. Celebrating its fifth year sponsoring the Good Hands Field Goal Nets. Allstate makes contributions to participating universities' general scholarship funds for each field goal and extra points kick. To date, Allstate has contributed more than $1.8 million in scholarship monies. Thank you, Allstate. My boys aren't quite college age yet, but maybe Allstate could think about me down, down the road. Right? Down the road. <laughs> Brown hit at the 24 and dropped. Marky Anderson, the senior out of Fort Myers, Florida, from his cornerback position, gets the sack. All right, Dave, as a quarterback, you have that clock that goes off. It's a passing situation. You know, you don't have a lot of time. Get back, get set. The ball has got to come out. If you hold it, you are guaranteed to end up on your back. Boy, it looks like Harris slipped in that hesitation. Just for a moment, loud William Green, another sophomore to come in there and get credit for the tackle for loss. Yeah, he had two tackles last week. Parade All-American out of high school, another talented recruit coming in. Spain Park High School in Hoover, Alabama. Detroit backing up after they got the ball all the way down to the 17 yard line. It's now third down and 18 from the 25. Batted in the air right through the hands of Jernigan. It has not been a great afternoon for Jarrell Jernigan. He's had a lot of great afternoons, but today won't be one of those. Yeah, you know, you mentioned last, earlier that he broke that record, a 40-year-old record with the 77 receptions last year for Troy. We did it. We missed three games with a knee injury, so it was 
that much more impressive the season that uh, Darrell Jernigan had, but this is one that you'll want to put behind him this football game. This field goal from 42 yards out. Sam Glussman on the way. And it is good. So he's connected from 45 and 42. That makes it a 49 to six ball game with number one Florida in control. 38 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Dave Neal, Andre Ware from the Swamp in Gainesville, along with Kara Capuano, who's down on the sidelines, trying to dry off after a pretty severe rainstorm throughout the first half. Tim Tebow, 308 total yards, four touchdown passes through the air, one on the ground. Gator fans, after what was kind of a uh, shaky start, the Gators have settled in, and Tim Tebow was the reason why. Yeah, he, he starts the game with a touchdown pass to Deontay Thompson. Then the second one to uh, roommate Raleigh Cooper, then decides to run one in himself. He getting himself into the end zone here. Again, going to Deontay Thompson over the top. And then one more time up top to Brandon James, a well-thrown football from Tim Tebow. What a nice afternoon for the Gator offense. Well, you know, we had a chance for you and I come in on Thursdays, and uh, we had a chance to go spend some time after practice with Tim Tebow in full uniform. And, you know what was great? 20 years ago, mm -hmm. you won the Heisman Trophy. Two years ago, Tim Tebow won it. And I had a chance to watch you guys throw football, play a little game. <laughs> now, it's, it's been a while since you threw it, but it was great to see you guys hey, out hey, there talking around I was just happy, a just happy to get it to spin. <laughs> you know, I was throwing spirals, so that was it's on such short notice. That's what I was happy about yet the other day. Well, the Gators take it out of the 42-yard line. You know, we walk out, we're getting ready to talk to Coach Meyer, say hello, and after watching practice, and uh, here comes Tim Tebow, and Scott Leffler, the quarterback coach, and <laughs> Urban Meyer says, let's see what you got, big fella, and he's Put me on immediately the spot. puts you in this little game where they get about the 25-yard line, they try to hit the crossbar, yeah. and Tebow, like he does everything else, goes 100 miles an hour and everything. And I think he forgot my arm's about 20 years <laughs> older than Tim <laughs> Tebow, so it takes a little longer for it to get warmed up, but... Uh, he gets right into it. I mean, you, you it, competing in anything, he is all in to uh, to uh, to all of it. I, I, I'll bet he hates losing at checkers, chest, whatever it is he takes part in. He wants to win. Yeah, he was doing just that little sequence of events. He was doing it like it was for real. Brantley in the game for Tebow, hands it off left side. Chris Rainey, and you know, here he is, a guy trying to capture his second Heisman Trophy, only sophomore ever to win it. What do you think his chances are? I mean, obviously, with the injury to Sam Bradford, uh, it's going to be hard for Sam to win that. Not saying he won't, but it's going to be hard. Uh, it's going to be tough when you miss the amount of games that he's uh, scheduled to be out. But Tim Tebow, if he keeps having performances like today, uh, with all the, uh, the talk and all the media already focused on his season, he can continue to do what he's doing today. It's going to be tough for anyone else to slip in and, and win a Heisman other than Tim Tebow. That's the end of the third quarter. Florida leading at home 49 to 6 over the Troy Trojans. We will come back have fourth quarter action. Stay with us on the SEC Network. Florida leading Troy 49 to 6 as we begin the fourth quarter and you know being Tim Tebow has got to be a lot of fun. I mean when you have trees that are carved out into your likeness and painted to your likeness. I mean come on. <laughs> you know walking away from practice with him. I mean it, you know the guys just swamp students everybody else just kind of coming into town wanting a part of Tim Tebow. Here's Rainey making a man miss down on her feet dropped at the 33 yard line. Let's go back to that for a moment because honestly we had a, we had a chance to see what it's like in a 200 yard walk from the practice field to the locker room. He walks down the sidewalk and these girls come over and they want pictures. These guys come over they want autographs. These guys come over they want pictures. Yeah. I mean it's non-stop. Couldn't be more gracious no, about it either. He takes the time to take pictures with with the students and, and anyone else who wants the autographs and you know, gives him a piece of the time of his time. And it's every day. Yep. Here's Rainey dancing around inside the 30 down to the 25 yard line. For more on that, let's go downstairs and bring in Kara. Dave, thanks so much. You know, he is a senior now and he tells 
Obviously, when enough is enough, mentally he keeps preparing through the week, but he has realized how important it is now, as he gets a little bit older, Andre, to take a rest physically once in a while. Do you remember that growth process? <laughs> Yeah, it's been so long ago, I have to think think a little while. Yeah. But no, you can just kind of go so much that you burn your body out, and he knows just how much to really pace himself and still get the quality work in for the game coming up on Saturday. That handoff to Rain, he loses a couple of yards. Andre has become the master at resting. That's That's it. It. Yeah. 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 There's, right. there's no uh, substitute for it, big guy. <laughs> well, we'd like to recognize Tim Tebow for Florida is our SEC Network Scholar Athlete of the Game. ESPN Regional Television will contribute $1,000 to Florida's General Scholarship Fund on his behalf. Congratulations to Tim Tebow. You know, he's taken one class. He's going to graduate in December. He wants to walk. He's taken one class called Senior Seminar. Still well, never quite got the definition of what that is. No, but what it does is it allows him to spend a lot of time at the football <laughs> complex getting ready for the game on Saturday. Here's Rainey. Boy, they're giving him a ton of carries here in the second half. I think he got the first down close to the 20-yard line. Rainey had one carry last week, and it went for 76 yards and never saw the football again. Boy, he's just tough as well, running between the tackles. And he's not a big guy. You see him there, 5'9", 180 pounds, but not afraid to get inside. And what allows him to do so, you've got all those big 6'5 linemen up front, 300-pounders, and he's a small guy. Gets behind him, just kind of hides, and then, Boom, the speed turns on. Urban Meyer wants a timeout, and he will get it. A flag came in late, but I think he'll get. Well, hold on, Tom Ritter saying. I believe they're going to give him the timeout, I think. The official word here. Prior to the timeout being called, we had a dead ball substitution infraction against Florida. They had 12 players in the formation. Five yard penalty, still first down. So we're going to give you the timeout, but you're going to take right. the five first yards along double with Double whammy. <laughs> it's about the worst thing that's happened to Florida here in the last couple of hours. You know, and I ask you, going back to what you were talking about with Tim Tebow. Timeout, Florida. That is their first charge come out of this half. And you know, he he said, I asked him, are you do you know the offense well enough to teach it? He said, absolutely, helping the young players. We'll come back. Stay with us. Well, that face paint got washed off back in the first half when it poured here at the swamp. <laughs> but he's still a happy camper. I don't know how happy he'll be, but anytime Coach Meyer can pick up a win, you know, at the end of the day, he's going to enjoy that. It's 49 to 6 in the fourth quarter, 12 41 to go in the game. John Brantley in that quarterback, the sophomore out of Ocala, Florida. First down at 15. Here's Rainey. He gets slammed to the turf. Mario Addison. Here's Brandon James, our good hands player of the day, brought to you by Allstate. And what a grab. Tebow laid it out there and said, James, go get it. What a sweet pass. Standing in there, you know you're going to take a lick. Stands in there and delivers a perfect strike to Brandon James. Second down and 17 as the ball sits on the 28-yard line. Ruben Young, good look at that offensive tackle. Batted in the air, incomplete. Intended for Justin Williams. And that's one that he's going to wish he had back. And right between the numbers, the number. Junior wide receiver, Holston, Georgia. When you get a chance to get on the field, there's some talent. You got to make some plays when you get out there. Third down and 17 now. Rainey alongside Brantley in the backfield. Brantley steps up at the pocket. He'll keep it. And he'll be well shy of the first down. Good play defensively as he's run out of bounds by Rod Winston. Redshirt freshman out of Columbus, Georgia. We're going to bring on Jonathan Phillips. The senior kicker who was knocked one in last week from 38 yards. 
Get some work in in all phases of the game. As they prepare for SEC competition, actually starting next week in this stadium against Tennessee. That kick is way off the mark to the right from 39 yards out. His leg might be tired. Doing a lot of kicking today. Back in a moment. <laughs> A look at the graffiti wall, the intersection of Archer and 34th Street. Always getting a fresh coat of paint on game weekends. Every time I come down here, it's, you know, I come down here about once a month for football, basketball, baseball, what have you. That's it's a different wall every time I come to town. <laughs> fresh set of paint, huh? Levi Brown still in that quarterback for the Trojans. Swings it out wide open. Is Patrick Cherry, who fell down in the open field, picks up eight on the play. Time for our Polaris ORV, hardest working player of the game. And we're going to give it to Justin Tratto. Four tackles, a tipped pass, a fumble recovery, and was just all over the field. Actually played a little tight end, too, in their jumbo set inside the five yard line. Hard working man today. Excellent football game he played and was all over the field. You mentioned it. Came in at, at tight end down the goal line situation. I think the depth at Florida stands out to me. I, you know, no doubt like, about it. They play a lot of guys, and they, there's not much of a drop off. We're talking to Charlie Strong. He mentioned the fact that they will rotate as many as 12, 12 defensive linemen throughout the football game. So when you have that type of depth, where you can do that, you've got fresh players, and you talk to Urban Meyer about the offensive side of it. And three tailbacks, Demps, Rainey, and Moody. And he says, I would rather have those three give them 10, 10, and 10 than to have one bell cow that you hand it to 25, 30 times a game. Because when that guy goes down, then you're in trouble. That handoff to Harris, not much happening there. And, you know, I think that's a change of philosophy for him because, you know, before the season started, and it may have been another way to, to get in these guys' heads. No doubt. But he said, you know, I'm looking for that one guy that can carry the football. And I think he was trying to drive all three to be the best they could be, to be that one guy. I think he would like to have that one guy times three. Right. You know, but he's got uh, he's got some pretty good ones. And Demps Rainey and then Emmanuel Moody, the transfer from USC. They are fast. They're not the big, big guys that you see around college football, but they carry it and they do a heck of a job in this Florida offense. Goggins back to punt. Frankie Hammond will return, but a flag comes in. Delay of game against the Trojans. Actually, they're going to reset the clock. The clock did hit zero. There but is no foul for delay of game. We were going to reset the clock. Thank you, Thomas. Let's reset the clock. 9.53 to go in the fourth quarter. Larry Blakeney. This team will fall to 0-2. And over in pin. Hammond will drop it at the 23-yard line, and he will fall on it. There's a timeout on the field. Don't forget the Gators and the Volunteers next week. We'll talk about that little showdown when we come back. 6-9-33 to go in the contest. Gators with the football. John Brantley in at quarterback on a first down and 10. Brantley rolls left, fires and hits Omarius Hines, who takes it out over the 34. That'll be a first down for the Gators. Take a look at our upcoming schedule for Florida, brought to you by Toyota, moving forward. And, of course, next week it will be the Tennessee Volunteers right here inside of the swamp and that is a game that I think a lot of people have been talking about for the past six months yeah, since we, really Lane Kiffin got the job December 1st. We got a chance to see Tennessee last week. They were very impressive facing the Bruins of uh, UCLA this afternoon. Well, of course Coach Kiffin certainly had a lot to say when he got the job. Here's a little taste. I'm really looking forward to embracing some of the great traditions at University of Tennessee. For instance the ball walk, running through the tee, singing Rocky Top all night long after we beat Florida next year. It's going to be a blast. Okay, so get ready. So one of our coaches is sitting in the meeting with me. He says, who's that? And he look, looks at the phone and says, Urban Meyer. Okay, 
just so you know, when a, when a recruit's on another campus, you can't call a recruit on another campus. But I love the fact that Urban had to cheat and still didn't get him. Mm. That'll stir the emotions if you're a Gator fan. Pass is caught by Cade Holiday. Down to the 35, inside the 33-yard line. Well, Andre, obviously, that that is uh, – there are a couple of reasons that he would say that. Right. Your take as a guy that's been around the game for a long time. Well, he's trying to get the fans fired up and the kids as well. And you know what? I'm okay with a coach with a little bit of swagger. Urban Meyer does it in a little bit different way. But uh, I certainly wouldn't go poking the number one team in the nation. <laughs> you definitely don't want to stir up that fire. And uh, yesterday in our meetings, you know, just we had to ask the question because it's going to start next week. Amarius Hines makes a man miss to the 20. Hines on his feet, tripped up at about the eight yard line. Well, when I asked the question, it was uh, an interesting answer. For more on that, let's go downstairs and check in with Kara. Well, Dave, I was going to give you credit for asking the question, and thank you for that. Coach Meyer's response was that this is a player's game first. The minute that it becomes something more than that, as a coach, he's failed. It's about the players. He would never put himself ahead of them. And so this side story involving the coaches, he wants no part of it because it's about them and what they do on the field, Dave. Yeah, and, you know, in the follow that up, I said, you know, it's going to be asked over and over, and he says, I'm going to give him the same answer over and over. This isn't about me. This isn't about Lane Kiffin. It's, yep. about, it's about these two football teams. And whether or not, you know, I, I, I would say this, just knowing Urban Meyer like I've gotten to know him over the years, internally that fire oh, it's is, is, oh, it's it burning. is hot. No doubt about it. But, you know, he's one that he does put the players first. Uh, if you look at it and you go back, he's never been on the cover of, uh, of a media guide on game day. You know, you look at, uh, at the, the trophy room and, the, and all that stuff, they're just pl players all over the place. It's all about the players to Urban Meyer. You know, and you look at the people in the stands, and, you know, we're around the game. We yep. hear it. I mean, you know this. The fans, both places, can't wait for this game, especially the way Tennessee played in their opener. And if they play well today against UCLA, that's even going to stoke yep. the flames even more. I, I was at the hotel, and uh, one of the fans, Florida fans, was there and talking to one of the ladies behind the desk. And he's talk, she's talking about the Troy game. He said, yeah, but wait till next right. week when Tennessee comes in. He's already preparing for next week against Tennessee. It's already, we, we, you know, we're in the position where we've had a chance to really see both teams. Yeah. Uh, you know, it's hard to make a judgment on just how good Tennessee is, but I do know this, that when they play on Saturdays, they're going to feel like they have a chance to win every Saturday. It may not, but I think the confidence level of Tennessee right now is where it hadn't been in a while. Touchdown, Florida. The true freshman, Mike Gillisley, out of Deland, Florida. Third touchdown pass this season for John Brantley. And there are some quarterbacks around the country that are starters that are looking for their third touchdown pass of the season. Caleb Sturgis now will attempt the point after. Sturgis, the sophomore out of St. Augustine, Florida, handles the kickoff duties for Florida. And his point after is up, and it is good. And here comes a flag. A couple of flags come in late. You know, more and more, Dave, we're starting to see young players true freshman hit the field and we visited with Charlie Strong and said look our philosophy is you come in you're ready to play or you can contribute you're gonna play because if they're good enough for us to recruit them we might not have them for four years so why not play them early they may exit early and go on to the NFL that's kind of the Lane Kiffin philosophy too at Tennessee he doesn't even talk about red shirt dead ball personal foul number seven Against Troy, the point is good. So it's 56 to 6 with 6.19 to go here in the fourth quarter. Gators in complete control. Back to Gainesville after this.
At the Swamp, number one Florida in complete control of the Troy Trojans. Dave Neal, Andre Ware, Kara Capuano, glad you could be with us on our SEC Network Game of the Week presented by Wrangler. Tim Tebow, 308 total yards. Riley Cooper, another five-catch afternoon. And that kickoff will sail into the hedges in the end zone. And if you're just coming on board, here's a look at some of the Tim Tebow highlights. Oh, fantastic. Got it started with a touchdown pass to Deontay Thompson. And with a roommate, Riley Cooper decides to run one in himself. He goes back to the air again to Deontay Thompson. And well, Tebow has had one heck of a game. He's had a nice two-week start to his senior season. You know, last week only got to play a half. And he said he walked over to Coach Meyer. <laughs> when they yanked him and said, Coach, come on, man. We, we, one you know, more drive. we got to work on the two-minute. <laughs> he said, Coach Meyer just kind of looked at him like, uh-uh. Here's Brown. Jarbo got tangled up back at the 35-yard line. It's incomplete. Time to take a look at our Wrangler five-star player of the game. I'll give you a guess. Yeah, that man. Tim Easy Tebow. one. Yeah, five touchdowns, four through the air. Easy one today having a... Fun senior year, light classroom load, and can spend a lot of time at the facility getting himself ready for Saturday afternoons. How about this, Andre? 71 career touchdown passes, only 11 interceptions. That's sick. Sick. <laughs> Four man rush, little screen pass, incomplete. Looking for Dewan Harris, and that'll bring up a third down. So much talent, Lorenzo Edwards, the junior outside linebacker from Orlando, Florida. And just another speed type in this Florida, on this Florida defense. And he and A.J. Jones kind of share that position at strong side linebacker. Brian Stamper on the other side, he's kind of the leader of that linebacking core. A lot of people talk about Brandon Spikes, talented in his own right, but Stamper's really the leader of that linebacking core. That pass is complete on the far side. Cornelius Williams with a nice grab over Marky Anderson, but that's shy of the first down. That'll bring up a fourth down situation. Brown today through the air it is nine out of 25. Long day. Long day for Levi Brown. He had a nice start to the season last week in the first half, 18 of 20 he completed, but it's been a long day against a talented, talented defense of the Florida Gators. End over end, wobbly kick. That'll be taken by Frankie Hammond at the 30. Frankie flagged down, he's dropped at midfield. Frankie Hammond Jr. Well, this is one area that Urban Meyer will probably have a nice long chat with his guys about. And that's special teams. We've seen that two or three times today on his special teams units. Penalties have been an issue for Florida. Last year they were 105th in the country. They were 11th in the league. Only Georgia had more penalties. During the return, illegal block in the back, number 16 of the receiving team. 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. First down. First down. Today's SEC Network game has been brought to you by Polaris. See the hardest working, smoothest riding off-road vehicle now at your local dealer. Champion, it's how you play. All State, you're in good hands. The third annual SEC Big East Invitational, December 9th and 10th in both New York and Tampa. And by Cooper Tires, don't give up a thing. Florida Field has emptied out somewhat as Florida rattled off 28 second half points. And another flag comes down. This will be... Play a game. Number 12, offense, five-yard penalty, remains first down. That is the tenth penalty against Florida for 87 yards. 
Both quarterbacks pretty special afternoons today. You see the numbers on Tim Tebow, the four touchdown passes, and then John Brantley right in stride with him, six of eight, and a touchdown pass in his own right. A lot of time early here early in the season. First and 15, it's Gillisley, the true freshman, and he might have lost a yard, but you know, we came on the air today and we were talking about three things. The yep. bonsai fast-paced offense, some more packages defensively, and special teams work. Your assessment. I, th I think they hit it in all three phases. You look at them on offense, they did speed things up and they finally kind of caught rhythm, so to speak, and just blasted off from a 7-3 lead to a 35-3 lead before we could blink. Defensively, they showed the looks, got to Levi Brown. And then special teams-wise, with the exception of a couple of penalties, uh, they would have had some great returns. Brandon James on a, on a return for a touchdown. They came back for a, uh, a block in the back penalty. But uh, I thought they looked sharp, really, in all three phases of the game. Once they got past the sloppiness early, and a lot of that had to do with the weather, that coach, coach right there, Urban Meyer, he's going to be pretty satisfied with the, uh, the performance of his football team. El Troy to just 121 yards on 55 plays to this point. Here's Brantley on third down over the middle pass is caught out at the 38 by Cade Holiday, the senior out of Gainesville, Florida, able to move the chains. And talking to Urban Meyer yesterday, you know, we, we asked him about Florida and how this program's built, and he said, well, speed. And that's why he came to Florida. You can kind of throw a net over the state and find the speed that's necessary to run the type of offense that he runs. And he wanted to build competition, you know, at every position. And when you do that, you can build yourself a good program. He says it takes about four years of good recruiting. And then when you lose one player, the whole entire program doesn't come unglued. You can just plug in another guy and goodbye until that player comes back. Gillisley on the carry, got hammered pretty good. Let's go downstairs, check in with Kara. Well, guys, what you were talking about, Coach Meyer, obviously he's been here just long enough that he's finally really revving. The wheels are churning, and he went on record a couple of weeks ago and said he absolutely loves coaching this team. From the bottom of his heart, he loves them. Now, when the players were told about that, Major Wright said, wow, this is by far the earliest he's ever made that kind of a comment about a squad. <laughs> Brantley's pass is caught to Justin Williams. Yeah, he, did, he, did, he said as well, Major Wright is a guy that he has to talk to every day, as well as Tim Tebow when he gives him a day off. You know, he's either text messaging them or something, but he's got to communicate with those players on a daily basis. And uh, it's great when you can have that type of relationship with your head coach. I'll tell you what, it makes football a lot of fun. And winning helps. <laughs> Doesn't hurt. <laughs> this will be the Gators' 12th straight win since that loss to Ole Miss. Brantley pulling over the middle. It's Cade Holiday. Cade at the 35. A flag down in the backfield. We'll see what this is all about with two minutes to go. A rough in the passing. Well, you see the talent of John Brantley. He's kind of been defined as the third best quarterback in the SEC behind Tim Tebow, Jevin Personal Snead. Personal foul, roughing the passer, number 41 defense, 15 yard penalty, first down. Behind Tebow and Snead, and then it's John Brantley, and that's a, a heck of a compliment to a guy that is second team on his own football yeah. team. I'll say this, the way Jonathan Crompton played last week, he might, might have moved up the pecking order a little, little bit with five touchdown passes. No doubt about it, but he'll be measured on what he does today against the Bruins. He has got some work ahead of him today. So the clock dips under two minutes. Gillisley. Lost the football. And Troy will have it. Canoris Davis causes the fumble. Or oh, put his helmet right on the football. And you know, we, we talked about the satisfaction of this football game for Urban Meyer. He'll point to the turnovers and something that they have to clean up if they are going to indeed run the table in the SEC and be the champions of this conference. But you can't turn the football over 
in the SEC. Norris Davis, what a nice tackle for the freshman, putting the ball, putting his helmet right on the football. Chris Bowen's able to come up with that ball, and for Florida, that is six fumbles. Three have been lost. Well, you start doing that in league play, and that'll get you beat. No doubt about it. Parker in at quarterback. He'll keep it down to the 25-yard line. That'll be good enough for a first down. 127 to play. Jonathan Bostic, talented freshman linebacker from Florida, makes the stop. And of course, you know, a lot has to play out today around the league, but uh, to say the environment around here next weekend would be uh, exciting is it's kind of an understatement. No doubt about it. It's going to be crazy here in, uh, in Florida, here in Gainesville, and, and we'll be watching, that's for sure. And I'll be over in Tuscaloosa. Alabama next week get our first look at the Crimson Tide see how Nick Saban's bunch looks I know they look good Saturday night inside the Georgia Dome how about Mark Ingram as a tailback talk about a guy he ran for 150 yards just started pounding people love watching him play that'll be our game next week as North Texas invades Tuscaloosa be sure to join us at noon SEC Studio show gets underway with Rob Stone, Matt Stinchcomb. Montavious Parker still in at quarterback. For Troy, they'll go home, lick their wounds, try to get refocused. They still have a conference championship to play for. They are three-time defending Sun Belt champs. You're walking away from this game in Urban Meyer. What, what is what is your your message to your team, knowing that we have? You know, he's not going to talk about and praise them on the good things that they did in this football game. It's the mistakes that will get you beat right. if you play in the SEC. And the fumbles, the three fumbles, or the the three fumbles that were turned over. Actually, he's going to harp on that. And cleaning things up will be the message this week for the Florida Gators. That is the final play of the game. Urban Meyer wins again. The Gators' 12th straight victory ties the 1995 team that also won 12 games in a row. Larry Blakeney, one of the great guys in all of college football, shakes hands with Urban Meyer. We will come back to the swamp and put a wrap on things. 56 to 6 is our final score. The Florida Gators thankful for the victory today. They win it 56 to 6 over the Troy Trojans. And the Florida Gators look every bit of number one team after the first quarter. It was 7 to 3 after 15 minutes of play. And then Andre, they found their comfort zone. Well, they really did. I mean, they, they put some things together and sped the offense up, which is what they wanted to work on. They want to play at a much faster pace. The defensive coordinator Charlie Strong got what he wanted out of his defense, was able to give some different looks, and then special teams-wise, they won in the field position battle as well. So in all three phases, they look good, but they do have some uh, things to clean up in the area of turnovers before next week. 663 yards of offense. Back-to-back -back weeks of over 600 yards of offense. <laughs> Pretty <laughs> impressive stuff. Once again, our final score, 56-6. Florida wins it over Troy. Be sure to join us again Saturday September 19th at noon Eastern for the SEC Network Game of the Week presented by Wrangler as Alabama will play host to North Texas. Our final score, 56-6. The Gators win it. They go to 2-0. For my partners, Andre Ware and Kara Capuano, this is Dave Neal saying so long, everybody.